If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who have had encounters while driving in the middle of nowhere, through forest roads, and haunted wooded roads at night, what scary creature or phenomenon did you see? This story always makes me feel sick to my stomach, but once late at night driving on 77, there's this sharp curve in the road when you're almost near Higgins Beach. Me and my friend were in the car, and I was driving. I saw what I thought was a deer, I thought it was a deer because that's what any large animal at night is right, on the left side of the road, and the split second I registered it, it was directly next to the passenger side of the car. Of course we were driving, so it was a blur, but I was immediately filled with a heavy dread. What I saw was something standing on two legs, the top of its body out of sight, taller than my old little Buick, and white matted hair all over it. I remember my friend looking at me while I looked over her shoulder, and then she turned to look, and we were both filled with that sick dread feeling. I never knew what it was and hardly want to know yet. My sighting happened roughly at 2 AM, and it was while I was driving. I live in the middle of the woods, so to speak, in a very heavily wooded area. I had a creature with the wings of a bat that stretched, i.e., about 5 feet wide, fly across the street from the top of the tree line to I level across the state into the tree. But it flew so fast, and at such a swoop, it caught me so off guard. I was going 65 miles an hour, and the creature appeared to be moving at the same speed, even though it was clear it had just come from the top of a tree. I would say it was about 3 to 4 feet tall, somewhere in between. Along with a 5 foot wingspan. Brown colored with, not fur, not feathers, but this thick looking leatherish skin. I couldn't see its face at all because its wing was held across its feet. The best description I can give is feet like a big dog, only with much bigger claws. It was incredible but shocking at the same time. Since it happened, I haven't seen it again, but I am glad I'm not the only one who has seen something that fits the details so closely. A few years ago, my mom and I were driving to our house from my grandparents. I had stayed with them for a couple nights with my three-year-old cousin, who was the worst person to have at night. While we were driving, we saw a hitchhiker. Mom doesn't normally pick hitchhikers up, and after this night, she never did again. But this one time she did, and after the research I have done, it was the right thing to do. The hitchhiker was wearing an oversized coat that covered his whole body and legs. His hair looked matted and dirty, like he was homeless. He smelled like garbage mixed with mud and cow poop. Mum asked the man where he was heading, he didn't say he just snorted. A little farther down the road, she was about to ask him again, but he was already gone without opening the car door. All that was left of him were muddy footprints that looked more like hoofs. Mom and I looked at each other with pure confusion. When I got home, I got on my phone and looked up the goat man to see if we had one here in New Zealand. To my surprise, we might have more than one goat man. In Maori legend, there are two types of goatmen. There's one with a goat body and human legs that embodied evil, and the other one has the body of a human and the legs of a goat that embodied good. The one we saw was the one who embodied goodness, also known as the hitchhiker. So just to start off, this story is about a friend of mine, not me. Anyways, he has to drive back and forth between towns a lot because we live in a very small town with less than 2,000 people, and he was just driving and talking to a friend on the phone when he saw a roughly 12-foot tall humanoid-looking creature standing on the median on the road. He says that it was too dark to say very much about it, but that he could clearly see limbs and fingers on the creature, as he passed by, the creature turned its body towards him. Needless to say, he floored it and cranked up his music. He also told me that he felt a profound feeling of dread throughout that entire encounter, and he really doesn't get scared very easily. I was driving with him along the same road today when he told me about it. We did not see it, and there were no visible traces of the creature that we could see from the car. Thoughts? So this happened a couple years ago when I visited my friend who goes to college in Utah. The story starts when my buddy and I take a spontaneous trip to stargaze atop a fairly large mountain at like 1 to 2 in the morning. The drive takes about 2 hours one way, and pretty much the entire time you're driving through mountains and valleys, very, very rural. Nothing spectacular happens on the mountaintop, so we start the drive back to town after about an hour. By this time, it's around 3 a.m., and we are driving on a curvy road directly on the slope of a mountain. The road was situated so that, directly to the right of the road, was the mountain sloping downward, and the left was the mountain sloping upward. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, as we're driving, I look to the left of the road, which is the mountain sloping upwards, and I see a vivid, glowing, floating light. It seemed to be situated about 10 feet from the road and in between some trees. The light was probably 4 feet in diameter, if I had to guess from the trees that were next to it. The light was yellow but had an orange hue surrounding it, 
almost resembling a fire, but the light appeared to be a near perfect circle, and again, it was floating. I immediately point to the light and ask my friend if he sees it. He tells me he sees it, and we start trying to justify and explain what we saw. We had different theories, mainly a campfire, which is my best guess to explain it. But the shape of the light and the position of the light being so close to the road in the middle of nowhere seemed peculiar. And, again, I hate to mention the fact that it was floating again, but it was truly floating. Anyone have an explanation for this? Or experience something similar? I'm used to traveling to this city, which is a three-hour drive from where my family lives. There's a mountainous area we have to drive through for about one-third of the trip. One time, my mom was driving through the place. I was in the passenger seat when I peeked out the side window and saw a small community overlooking the cliff. The houses were fancy-looking bungalows. It's very weird for houses to be in that specific location, knowing there's nothing down there but plains of rice fields. They probably don't have data coverage either. The strangest thing is that we passed through that area a hundred times, but that was the only time I saw those houses. It was never there before, and I never saw it again. It felt dreamlike, but I'm sure it really happened because I was not the only one who saw the pretty houses, my mom did too. While riding down, east, Highway 50 in between Camino and Old Hamstown with my wife driving in California in the afternoon, I saw something clear as day and in no question in my mind. The problem is that what I saw couldn't be real, according to current academia and public knowledge. I'll give my best description, and hopefully someone can give me a name I can research. Now, eastbound 50 in the afternoon means you have the sun directly in the eyes of all drivers. Nonetheless, I saw what looked like a very tall, skinny humanoid type entity, all white, head to toe, and whatever clothing it has. Moving along oncoming traffic going westbound in the eastbound lane near the center divide. Its movement is that of speed warping 5 to 15 feet ahead of its previous location, a couple seconds go by, then warping to the next spot. So I could see this thing clearly for a few seconds, then it would blur to the next spot, then clear again. I couldn't believe cars weren't swerving or braking from this thing. It noticed that I saw it, and almost immediately it redirected right by my wife's window, and it felt like slow motion gave me a look of amusement, probably because my jaw was on the ground. This thing didn't put off pure evil vibes, and I felt nothing but shock at what I was seeing. It was not obviously a good entity, it felt more like somewhere in the middle, capable of either. A roommate in college experienced this almost two years ago, in the summer. He lives in Sault Ste. Marie, right by the border. For those unfamiliar with Sault Ste. Marie, it is a small Michigan town surrounded by deep pine woods. He had a severe panic attack, told us what happened, and wept. He was driving home from his grandmother's on the Canadian side of the border, through thick forest at night, when a figure stepped onto the road. He braked and switched off his high beams. It was a naked man with the head of a deer, just staring at him. After a moment, it walked back into the woods. Paralyzed, he drove the remainder of the road slowly while crying. I am skeptical, but he is unknown to lie and did have a severe panic attack, telling us what happened. Does anyone know what this could be? Or has anyone experienced something similar? So my partner and I were driving home from his brother's graduation. Well, we were basically the only people on the road, minus a few cars here and there. There was a man on the side of the road, just standing there, arms at his side, menacing us. He didn't flinch when we drove past. He just stood there in the dark, on the shoulder of the road. He had no vehicle near him that would indicate that he drove out there. We were in the middle of nowhere, with no cities or towns nearby, for a while. I got a really bad feeling when we passed him, it sent a chill down my spine. At first, I didn't know if my partner saw him too or if it was just me and my wild imagination. It was just a really strange experience for the both of us. My daughter and I went to Albuquerque for a conference a few years ago. I was trying to find a place to go eat dinner. There was tons of traffic and road construction, which was really frustrating driving conditions. I had the GPS going finally to a restaurant, and we were starving, so we were constantly checking the ETA, like 15 more minutes to dinner. Anyway, at around 5 minutes until we were due to arrive, I was driving over a bridge area, and traffic was still very heavy. I glanced quickly at the GPS, and it was spinning. I told my daughter, look. She saw it spin and looked back at traffic. Only a second had passed, but we were now 30 minutes from the restaurant, the car was going another way, and there was no sign of the bridge anywhere. I'm freaked out any time I think of this, and my daughter remembers it the same. When we hear a strange story, one of them will say, like that time we teleported. I don't know what to make of it, but we were not too happy about the extra time to get to the restaurant. My family and I had gone up to my grandparents' house. 
They had 10 acres of land and only used about 1 to 1.5 acres for the house and yard. They had a large, dense pine forest area all around their house. Except for the road to it, there was forest for miles around. They had cut down some trees to make four-wheeler paths that we could ride on when we went up there. One day, my sister and I were riding out on the paths on some of my grandparents' four-wheelers. For whatever reason, I think it was to get a drink, but I don't entirely remember, my sister went inside. I thought nothing of it and kept riding the four-wheeler I was on. Well, about three minutes later, I was driving past a really dense patch of the forest. Over the four-wheeler engine, I heard a loud growl. I heard it clearly to my left in the patch of forest. Thinking it was just a coyote, I looked over towards where I heard the growl. I did not see a coyote. You know that feeling when you look into a forest at night and you get scared something will stare back at you? Well, this happened to me in the middle of the day. What I was looking at still haunts me to this day. I was staring into two large, yellow eyes. It appeared that they were sunken into the creature's face. The eyes were probably about 1.75 times the size of a normal human eye, and they were watching me. I could see by looking at the eyes alone that this was a smart creature. I didn't get to see what it was because it was standing in a bush. This bush was very large, probably about 10 feet tall. About 8 feet up, this bush is where I saw these eyes. I couldn't see any other part of this creature, but I didn't stick around to find out what it was. I put the four-wheeler into drive and sped up to about 55 to 60 miles per hour. I ran inside and did not go back out on the paths for the rest of the trip. No one else in my family saw anything, but I was terrified of whatever it was. Fast forward six years, and it is this year. I was talking with my friend about spooky things we had seen. I told him about this story and began to wonder what I could possibly have seen. I did a lot of research on what large predatory animals live up there. It is northern Idaho if you don't believe me and want to go check. After doing a little bit of digging, I found that there were no animals that were 8 feet tall. I didn't believe it because I was skeptical of anything that was paranormal. I checked again and again because I didn't want to believe it was something that no one had ever captured or been able to prove existed. The largest wolf ever found would have only been 6 feet tall when standing on its hind legs. The largest bear might have been large enough, but it could not have fit in that bush. So I began to research any possible creature that it could have been. Eventually, I found one. A Wendigo. It was the only possible creature I could have seen. I don't know why it didn't attack me or why it let me get away. Based on the features I saw, the large, yellow, sunken eyes, it could have only been a Wendigo. What scared me even more is that a couple years later, my grandparents moved out of that house for an unknown reason. They say it was to be closer to the family, but the family was fine, making a long drive and coming up very often. They moved only a little bit closer. It is still a long drive. I live in the Ozarks, and for the past two years I have often had to drive through the Ozark National Forest for about two hours back and forth. It's a long stretch with no towns, no lights, just hills and trees as far as you can see. Nothing weird has ever happened on my drive. Well, like a month ago, I was driving the normal route. It was sunny but hazy, and I felt something invade my thoughts. I got this really buzzy feeling in my body, like something was trying to yank me out of my body. I just felt really weird. I wasn't high, and I don't drink. I started feeling something talking to me, and it felt like it was coming from the hills or was the hills. It was basically conveying to me without words that it wasn't male or female, was really old, and needed energy devoted to it, but it had to be mutually given. None of this was in words, it was like I just knew. I pulled over as I came out of the mountains because I felt so weird. I chalked it up to being tired, but every time I have had to drive the pass in the past few weeks, I feel whatever it is pulling at me. What could I be experiencing? Should I just pull over one day and get out and see what happens? This happened a while ago, back in September. My friend and I like to go on late night drives through the country, eating snacks and just chatting about different things. On this particular night, she wanted to visit her mom since we were going to be nearby. Her mom still lives in the same house that my friend grew up in, which is in a heavily wooded area by a lake out in the country. As we were leaving, she turned, and we started driving past a cornfield. I was about to comment on how high the corn was when my friend suddenly smacked my leg. Do not. Look in the corn. She sounded very serious, but, despite myself, I glanced over. There were a pair of red eyes in the corn, and since she was driving fast, it was only for a split second. I had to stop myself from saying anything, but I had a feeling she knew anyway, just because of how fast she drove to get past the field and how she remained silent up until we were a good mile or two ahead of it. My friend has always had a fear of cornfields, and no matter how many times I ask her, she refuses to tell me why. 
Her husband did tell me that it's because of something called corn demons. I know what I saw, but at the same time, I don't. I have no idea what it could have been. I deliver for a local pizza chain in Southern Ohio. It's in a rather small city with lots of farmland and heavily wooded roads. While I was driving down one of these long wooded roads, having to use my brights because there are no street lights for several miles, I got a strange feeling that I wasn't alone this time. I started to look around and notice something to my left in the trees. There was a pair of bright red, glowing eyes about five or six feet above the ground, staring straight at me. I immediately slowed to do a double take, and then another, and another, as these eyes watched me slowly drive by. My heart and mind were racing as I began trying to make sense of the situation. Maybe it was a mailbox reflector, but there were no houses there, or maybe brake lights on a car, but that did not make sense either since there was nothing there but trees. I even went as far as thinking maybe someone had hung something in the trees as a joke, but they were gone when I came back. Once I had passed and could no longer see whatever it was that was watching me, I began looking for road signs to use as markers when I returned down the road after I had delivered the pizza. While on my way back down the road, I drove carefully and slowly, looking for the spot of my encounter. I started to slow down as soon as I saw the road signs and began to scan the tree line with the camera on my phone, ready to snap a picture of anything I saw. But there was nothing there. It was gone. Ever since that night, I have been up and down that same road countless times since this and have never seen those eyes again nor anything else in that spot. I thought it must have been an animal of some kind, if nothing else, but when I did some minor research into different animals who have eyes that glow red, there were none living in the area. I have asked around, and I believe it is most likely the moth man, but I have no idea why it would reveal itself to me, I may never know. I still frequent this eerie road as well as many others on my routes. I will be getting a dash cam because most of the time I am on these roads, I feel as if I am being watched and would love to capture something on camera to have as proof, other than just my word. This story was told to me by my friend a few days ago. When I was a child, my parents moved to the Grand Cayman Islands for work. I recently completed my, Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, basic training and am now a rookie police officer at the Cayman Islands Baden Town Police Station. I work mostly night shifts with my partner, whom I'll call Peters for privacy reasons. Now we patrol most of the Red Bay area and some parts of Georgetown to kill time. We usually take the long route into Georgetown, but tonight we decided to take a shorter road named South Sound. Now this road is much quieter with less traffic, so it's the ideal road to drive at your own pace. Which is what I was doing. I was driving at 30 and a 25. But Peters was asleep, so no one could scold me. I bobbed my head to music drifting from the radio as I drove on the dimly lit road. I slowed to a stop at a crossing as I looked for any oncoming traffic. I sped off down the road and smiled at the fact that this was peaceful. After a few minutes of driving, my headlights reflected off something in the distance. There was something crouched down nearly in the center of the road in the lane I was in. Leaning forward to get a better view, I realized my lights shone through the almost transparent figure. I screeched to a halt, waking up my partner. What the hell, Jones? He screamed at me but stopped short when he saw me staring intently at the road. Do you see that? I whispered as if frightened that it would hear. Peters turned to look out the window before hurrying to pull the door. What are you doing? I whispered and shouted at him. Someone could be hurt, he uttered as he got out of the car. I hurriedly stumbled after him and raced to his side, where he stood motionless. Peters what's? He spun around to me quickly, which had me step back in fright. It was there, right? You saw it too, he muttered while shaking my shoulder. I looked towards where we saw the figure, and my eyes widened. There was nothing there now, as if the person got up and walked away, but there was no way a person could get up and disappear by the time it took Peters to exit the car. I know some people will say this story is fake and whatnot, but you will never know until you drive on that lonely road at night. This happened around 2001 in a remote area in Nova Scotia, Canada. I was 17 or 18 at the time and was driving late at night with my cousin, who was 28. It was a warm summer night, and we were on a road surrounded by a forest. On one side of the road, there was a bog, which is basically a swampy wetland. In fact, the road was actually named Bog Road, and I had grown up on this road as a child, so I was very familiar with it. I knew every corner, every pothole, and every hidden path. As we drove along, I remember seeing the lights of a car shining on the trees coming from the opposite direction at a bend in the road. I was always a bit neurotic about switching my high beams to my low beams the exact moment the other vehicle came into view. So, like an old western cowboy practicing the speed draw of his gun, I rested my fingertips on the lever in anticipation. Except we never saw a vehicle come around the corner. As we neared the bend, 
I remember thinking that maybe someone was parked around the corner, but the lights were moving and seemed to grow brighter, as if something was heading our way. When we finally rounded the bend, I squinted my eyes, looking for the source. I looked to the next turn in the road, which disappeared into the dark woods, and saw the same light, as if a car were coming our way just like last time. Puzzled, I looked at my cousin, who was already looking at me with the same confused look on his face. What the hell's going on? I can't remember if it was him or me who said it, but we both now had our full attention directed at the lights up ahead. It looks like a car is coming, I said. My cousin just nodded and looked ahead, awaiting the simple explanation that would surely show itself at any moment. I can't remember how many twists and turns we navigated with these yellowish white lights coming at us, but it went on as if we were stuck in a time loop. I drove faster, thinking it may be a car or truck being towed with its headlights on. Then, at one point, the light stopped coming from the opposite direction on the road and was now coming at us through the trees themselves, through the forest off to our right side, as if a search party were shining lights at us through the trees. I remember both of us starting to curse and questioning each other about what we were seeing. It defied all logical explanation, and our minds couldn't make sense of what our eyes were telling us. To this day, we don't have an answer. I've continued driving this road ever since and have never seen the lights again. This happened years ago, I believe in 2017. I was about 18 years old at the time, having a party at my best friend's house in the woods with a bunch of us. I say the woods, but that's just what we call it, it was still a neighborhood with other houses around, just far removed from each other with tons of forest around and no real town or village center. We live in Ontario, and this area is rich with indigenous activity and history, as is all of Canada, but our spot is especially so. We live a stone's throw away from the first ever European settlement established in Ontario on the land of the Wendat. The party is going on, and my friend, who is hosting and has been completely sober in preparation for what we were about to do, pulls me aside and asks if I'll come with him to his hunting spot to lay some apples and feed to attract deer for the coming mornings when he would go out and hunt. I say yeah, of course. We get in the SUV with the feed and head to his hunting spot, leaving the party in the capable hands of our friends. The spot is about 10 or so minutes away from us, so not too much of a hike, it's down a long and deeply wooded dirt path. We drive down this path for, like, another 5 minutes or so until we get to his spot. Unloading the feed in the pitch dark, with just a couple of flashlights to help, we start scattering apples and feeding along the grounds. He checks his trail cams and such, and then we head back out. As we are driving down the dirt road, which is more like a wide path, TBH, suddenly from our right, a large light blue orb shoots slowly straight across our line of sight, weaves itself among the trees on the other side of the path or road, and disappears. We sit silent for about a minute until I ask him if he saw that too. My friend keeps driving as if he had seen it before and says, I don't really want to talk about it, dude. I asked him again if he at least saw it for sure, and he said yes, he did. This was a really cool experience, and my friend and I still talk about it to this day. Since then, he's been more open about discussing the orb. I'm still not sure why he didn't want to talk about it at first and how his reaction was so calm. I figure he must have had some experience before. I was about 20 at the time, and I was in the Navy. I got a leave from school around Christmas. I went back to my hometown in northwest Louisiana, right next to the border with Arkansas. I went to my friend's house in Arkansas. He lived across a lake that was in a national forest. I drove to his house around 9 p.m. I drove through the forest and around the lake to his house. We started drinking and catching up on things that had happened since I went to boot camp. Around 1 a.m., I was drunk, and I decided I should drive home. When I was driving, I got past the lake and into the forest. I was swerving and decided that I needed a nap. I got past this spillway, and I turned on this dirt road. I got to a place that used to be an oil rig or something. I pulled in the opening and turned my truck to where it was facing the road. I turned off my trick and locked the doors. I was thinking I was in the middle of a forest at night, so no one should drive past me or anything. So I laid down on my seat and went to sleep. I woke up not long after with a really creepy feeling. I sat up and turned my lights on and off. In the forest, I saw a black shadow thing walk out of the forest and stop in front of my truck. It looked at me for a minute, then walked to the other side of the road into the forest. I noped the duck out and drove all the way back to my grandmother's house. I don't know what that thing was in the middle of a forest at night, and I probably never will. I'm out of the Navy now, and sometimes I drive down that road, but every time I do, I get a feeling that someone is watching me. A few years later, I was out hunting with a friend when we lost legal light. So we hiked back to the truck and hit the road in his parents' new Ford Halfton, the ones with the sensors all over the vehicle. We had some music playing as we were just heading back towards town again, 
When the music started acting weird and cutting in and out with static, so me being in the passenger seat, I disconnected the Bluetooth and reconnected the phone. The music cleared up, and we continued down the road. We continued slowly driving down the road because it gets pretty rough in a couple spots and the road has a few sharp turns and an S bend. Well, we go about a kilometer further, and the music starts screeching and doing what we can only describe as alien noises. So I disconnect the Bluetooth again, and my friend says, oh, mom's got a cord in here. So he stops and gets the cord for me. I plug the phone in and play music again. Another kilometer down the road, and the phone goes ape, shh, t. I mean, loud alien squealing that sounds similar to that SHT dial-up internet noise from the 90s. We had started into the S-Bend when this was happening, and we shut the music off completely as we were driving still, making one half of the S-turn, and then we both looked up from the music deck or screen, and the headlight illuminated a figure standing in the middle of the road. So we swerve and take the ditch a bit, still going probably 30 kilometers per hour, and get the truck back up on the road. We continue coasting down the road, as we are both in awe after just seeing a flash of this thing. I finally say, after what seemed like five quiet minutes, man, did you just see? My friend cuts me off and says, a f kin skeleton in the middle of the road? I say, yeah, like a white rib cage, and a deer skull for a face? He finishes. I said, turn around. What the fck was that? Does someone need our help? Not thinking that we are in the middle of nowhere, with no vehicles around or any that we had passed from other hunters, it was early season and no one bow hunts here anyways. My friend said, I'm not turning around, I feel sick. I'm going to throw up. And he continued driving. We didn't see another vehicle until we hit the pavement again. It was taller than the pickup by easily a couple feet. I'm 6 feet 1 inch and my forehead is at the top of the window for reference, it is black surrounding the white of the bones, with long arms stretched to its sides as if it were saying, try and hit me. I watched this thing pass the passenger window and stared up at it as we wailed by it, and it was definitely three-dimensional, tall with long arms, and dark. Dead looking. Like light was sucked into it without reflecting anything. It is hard to explain. When we hit service again, my friend received a text message from his mother saying, what did you two idiots hit in my brand new truck? I guess the new Ford send near accident reports to the owner when the sensors pick up something? I'm an old school Chevy guy, so I don't know. The only thing I can find online that resembles what we both saw is a Wendigo without the antlers. Or the headlights didn't illuminate them anyway. When I received my license at 17 years old, I started spending all my free time outdoors, hiking all over the East Coast, but mostly within the NJ Pine Barren since I live in NJ. Roughly about six years ago, I, along with two of my friends, one a welder and one a mechanic, and I will be naming the welder Chris and the mechanic Alan, went off-roading in my friend Alan's truck somewhere in Manchester, New Jersey. We met with a bunch of Alan's off-roading buddies in a spot they frequented, I do not know the specific area, only that it was in Manchester, New Jersey, and it was very close to the general vicinity of the abandoned brick factory, and hung out for a few hours, drove around the dirt trails, and just had a good time socializing with other people. I did not have any alcohol or any pot in my system because after we left I had to drive myself home, so I was sober along with my Alan, who was also sober, but my friend Chris was a bit high. We were beginning to leave, and as we were taking the trails to get back to the main road, my friend Alan told me to help look out for deer. He was driving about 35 miles per hour because the dirt path we were on was pretty open, about 30-ish, feet wide, and we were dead in the middle in case he did have to respond to a deer jumping out of the tree line. A few minutes go by, and my sharp eyes spot a deer running along the side of the truck, but within the tree line, so the view of it wasn't more than a dark brown patch of fur. As I'm about to say something to my friend Alan, thinking that this deer is going to run in front of the car and try to commit suicide, it speeds up its pace significantly, gets about 20 feet ahead of the truck still in the tree line, and then proceeds to jump out in front of the truck. For as long as I live, I will never forget what I saw that night. It ran onto its two back legs, looked right up at us, and to our horror, it ran by this about 30 foot wide dirt road in two to three steps and went into the opposite tree line. In those few seconds, I saw this dog man or wolf man, and to this day, I cannot forget what I saw. It was roughly seven feet tall, estimating its height using my friend Alan's lifted truck as a reference, covered in dark brown fur, every inch of its body I saw was covered in this dark brown fur, but the chest slash stomach area had less fur and a lighter colored fur than the rest of the body, but even under all this fur, you could make out extreme muscle definition, very similar to an Olympic bodybuilder. It also had a K9 type head with a long snout, two distinct perked up wolf ears, and large muscular legs. 
The torso and arms were similar to those of a very muscular man with large hands. The hands had visible claws that looked like they could do some real damage, and its eyes reflected an unnatural color of light that I haven't seen in the animal kingdom. As soon as it jumped into the opposing tree line, my friend Alan slammed on the brakes, and my friend Chris said, I know I'm high, but what the actual duck was that? My friends, puzzled by what we just saw, look at me and go, okay, nature, boy, please tell us that was something explainable. I sat there dumbfounded and told them I did not have an answer based on reason, science, or anything else I could logically think of, and my friend Ellen High tailed it out of there. To this day, my friend Chris has convinced himself that it wasn't a hallucination because of the pot, and my other friend Alan, who does not believe in the supernatural and absolutely refuses to have an open mind, does not speak about this event and pretends it didn't happen. To this day, I still have no logical explanation for what I saw. I do not believe that a bipedal K9 creature could logically or biologically exist, but what I saw was something matching that description with my own eyes, and it is very real. A few years ago, well, probably 15 or more, it was before cell phones, my wife and I were driving through the national forest about an hour outside our town, headed to a neighboring town. We were on a two-lane main highway coming over a hill when we both saw a large passenger plane billowing smoke and fire as it descended towards the forest. It was so close to us that we could see the people's faces in the windows. We both watched, stunned, as the plane disappeared over the hill next to us. There were no roads in that direction, so we hurried as quickly as we could to the town, which was about 20 minutes away. When we got there, we asked some people we knew if there were any reports about the plane crash or if anyone had heard anything. They looked at us like we were crazy. There was no plane crash, no reported emergencies, nothing. My wife and I spent many hours discussing what we each saw in detail. There is no question, we both saw the people in the windows. We both saw the flames and smoke. The plane was about the size of a 737. We have had a few strange experiences around the national forests, but this was by far the strangest. This is an experience that happened to me in May of the year 2016, and I want it recorded somewhere. As I was driving and making a left turn at an intersection to go up a hill to my house, I saw a white Subaru with an identical roof rack that I still own. This was identical to a car I used to own, and I was shocked that it even had my old license plate number. This all happened quite fast as I was turning, and I didn't have much time to look. I tried to look at the other driver, but only saw the general shape of the head through the glare of the sun. I did see that the driver turned to look at me. I mentioned the roof rack because I still use it. It is 11 to 12 years old at this point and beat up. The roof rack on the Subaru I saw was brand new looking. After I turned, I drove up the hill. I suddenly remembered a strange experience at that very intersection I had while driving my Subaru. I remember a crazed guy in a silver Mercedes identical to the one that I drive currently doing a left turn in front of me while stopped going down the hill. The Mercedes driver was looking intently at me in a very strange way, and it was very weird. I remember thinking at the time what jerk was thinking. He's hot sh in that Mercedes. I don't remember any other details. I was not living in that area at the time, and I remember this event because I was buying baby stuff a few months before my kid was born. I moved a few blocks from that intersection about 5 years later. My kid was born on 8 2006, and I was getting baby stuff a few months before that. I'm pretty sure I saw myself from two different time frames 10 years apart, but it could have been a coincidence. My Benz is 10 years old at this point, and it was in production at the time. I didn't notice anything strange before or after the event, and I told my wife when I got home in either 2016 or 2006. My parents live in Ohio, so after making a pit stop there, we were on our way. Being broke at the time and wanting to save on tolls, we decided to take the toll-free route, which would land us in Philadelphia in about 10 hours. Originally, we were going to leave my parents' place early, but we got distracted and didn't leave until about 4 p.m. not a big deal. I've driven from Chicago to California and hiked parts of PCT in it by myself. I was mostly bummed because the sun will be down by the time we'll get to all the pretty foliage in the Smokies. Now, the route we picked essentially had you dipping in and out between WV and PA. The parts of WV we would be driving through are home to Mothman appearances. I was pretty excited about it, as those stories fascinate me. Living in the city, I don't often get to see a clear night sky. Having road tripped a lot, I knew sometimes more scenic highways would have viewpoint pullovers. So when we were in WV, I told my boyfriend to Google one and see if anything popped up. Sure enough, he found one. Being busy driving, I didn't bother to look at what his GPS showed and just followed his directions. 
I thought it was weird that the GPS told us to get off the highway since normally these vistas are located right on the highway, similar to a rest stop. Whatever, we take the exit and turn down this dimly lit road, which leads us up a smaller mountain base. I find it really strange that there aren't any other cars around. I did see a rusty sign for a scenic lookout, and it pointed us down what looked like a service road. The road itself wasn't paved, and the only other road leading off it was gated off. Both of us got a very weird feeling. I turned off the music because it was so creepy quiet, and my radio now sounded like I was blasting it from concert speakers. We could hear every leaf my car was crunching under its tires. After going maybe half a mile down this road, we got way too spooked, said Duckett, and I went to make a three-point turn to get out of there. At this point, the hair on the back of my neck is standing up. We drove maybe 50 feet before we saw a tree laying across the road we just drove on. Me turning around may have taken two minutes, and as I mentioned earlier, things were so quiet that we both knew we would have heard a tree fall down behind us. Panic started to take over, and something told me we couldn't just sit there and think long and hard about what to do. So my boyfriend said he would see if he could lift one side of the tree and move it over. I had my brights on and was scanning the surrounding woods for any signs of movement. I felt eyes on us but couldn't see anything. The tree didn't appear to be old, it literally looked as if someone had knocked it over just in front of us. As soon as my boyfriend was out of the car, the first thing I did was tell him I loved him, and then I locked the doors. I know, I'm an asshole. Thankfully, he was able to move the tree just enough for my car to squeeze through, and as soon as he was back in the car, we gunned it out of there. I'm a very spiritual person, and I believe that there are things in the woods that we don't always see. My boyfriend, on the other hand, is an atheist. That night, we both agreed that something sinister was out there. It was about a month ago that myself and two friends, all being pagan by the way, decided to go for a drive. That drive led us out to Cornell, of all places. As we drove, the minute we hit the Gladstone Township line, we all felt something heavy, something of strong malicious intent. We ignored the warning, thinking it was just something small that would fade as we drove, but it didn't. As we drove, it got stronger. It wasn't until about halfway through the loop that we saw our first deer, and at the time it was strange because that area is littered with deer, but as we got closer, it became clear that it wasn't a deer. It didn't behave like one, normally they bolt as soon as or shortly after seeing a car, and this one stood still and watched us go by. I saw its head turn toward us as we went. Not to mention, this one had glowing green eyes, not like the normal pale white or green eyes. Shortly after, I had my goddess scream in my ear to turn around, and so I did. I almost feel like that was a mistake. The minute I turned around, it seemed like the entire area came alive, like all the deer in a 5 mile radius came bolting to the area. As we went, more and more deer kept running into the road, like something was trying to keep us there. At this point, it was tracking us. The further we went, the stronger and more present it got. We all kept seeing things move in the forest around us, and I kept seeing things move just outside of the light beams. Once we finally went back inside Gladstone, it lightened just a bit but it followed us home. It stayed with my girlfriend after I dropped her off, which led to me having to come back into town to get her. It stayed with us all that night. Even occasionally speaking to one of us at a time. This is just one of a couple run-ins with whatever this is. There is this road that I travel nearly every day to and from work. The past two years of doing this have plagued me with sightings of strange creatures, mists crossing the road, figures I can't explain, unusual lights that have no source, and even things in the sky. Lately, I feel like it's been playing even more tricks on me. This road has many accounts of this, as I later found out while talking to people. But this particular incident has left me very confused, and if I get time, I will share more of these experiences. As of late, I have been taking a different route to and from work for the very reasons listed above. It takes me additional time to get to and from work, but I'm okay with that most days. Unfortunately, there is construction being done on my longer route, so I've had to go back to this strange road I try to avoid. Anyway, I've had a few incidents on this road that feel like time jumps without my noticing, and yet I go nowhere. An example of this was that I felt very foggy and dizzy, and then suddenly, 10 minutes went by and I'd barely made headway on a block that I should have already passed. These things were minor and a very, very small factor as to why I avoid the road as much as possible. Things were different this time. It takes me roughly an hour to get home from work, about 45 minutes at the bare minimum, and that's if I'm speeding. I have a habit of timing things as well as watching my bright neon clock in my car. It's part of the routines I keep, like my lists, but that's only a minor factor in this. Moving on. I left work in good spirits at exactly 
I know this because I had been on the phone with my mom as I got in the car and told her I really wanted to get home, so I wasn't stopping anywhere. I then left work, and there was minimum traffic as I left the city. As soon as I hit the highway that takes me to the road, I put my car on cruise control at 55 miles per hour, which is pretty normal. I do this because there are bored cops on various parts of these roads, and I'm not getting a speeding ticket for going four over because it's something for them to do. I remember driving down the road, which was pretty vacant considering it was the middle of the day and not late at night as most of my shifts end. I made it through the small town off the highway I have to go through and then right past my normally preferred ulterior route, its orange signs taunting away. I remember this. I remember not turning on my radio because I had a slight headache, and that wouldn't help. I remember turning off the road that I hated. But then, it stops. I don't remember driving anymore, and I don't remember getting off the road. I remember turning, and then. Nothing. The next thing I know, I am off the road and on the final part of the highway that leads me home. I pulled in my driveway and looked at the clock because something felt strange. It should be darker by the time I normally get home, but not tonight. My car clock reads 615. I wondered if my engine had done something and the clock had frozen, as it's happened before. But my phone read the same thing. I sat there for a few minutes, not getting out of my car, and I called my mom because I couldn't figure out how I had gotten home. I couldn't remember. How was I here so fast in general? She answered and asked if I could grab something from the store. I told her I was home already, and she asked me how. I couldn't answer. I still don't know. I don't know what happened, and I don't know how, but I am glad that the detour will be over soon. It was fall, and me and three other friends decided to take a camping trip up to the Gila National Forest. There was snow on the ground at our campsite, so it must have been mid to late fall. Anyway, we decided to take a day trip to go up to a remote lake that I know of that was very picturesque and serene. It took a while to get up there, but once we were there, it was great, until the storm came. It seemed like it came out of nowhere, and it was on top of us in ridiculous time. We didn't even make it back to my jeep before sleet was pelting us. Once we were in the jeep, we figured we'd better get back to the campsite, so we headed back down the winding trail, in four low mind you, because by now the ground was beginning to freeze over. While we were driving through the forest trail on an iced road, tons of animals started running out across the path from left to right, and in that direction only. There were deer, elk, raccoons, rabbits, skunks, etc. that was weird in itself, but when we got to the small road town between the mountain and our campsite, we saw something weirder. Six black military-style vehicles with tarp-like coverings on the cargo areas were all driving in a convoy back up towards where we just came from. I had no idea what they were doing going back up to that remote, stormy location. We finally arrived back at our campsite, and we immediately noticed a huge orange glow on the horizon, just over the area of the lake we were at. It looked like a forest fire, except it didn't taper off at the ends like a fire would, and it vanished after about two hours. Forest fires don't do that, so what the heck? After the weird fire looking light disappeared, we started seeing long white streaks in the sky above us that would disappear and reappear. This freaked out two of the guys to the point that they retired to the tent, but me and the other dude stayed up staring at these white light streaks for some time before they vanished for the night. Needless to say, we were more than eager to pack up and head back home in the morning. One last curious thing is that we stopped at a cafe on the way back to civilization to gas up and use the restroom. Outside the cafe were copies of the daily newspaper that read, solar flares seen in the night sky. I'm no expert, but I don't think our encounter that night was very indicative of solar flares. What do you guys think? Has anybody had any similar experiences? So, I'm not sure if what I saw was a skinwalker or something else. It certainly wasn't a dog like I thought it might be. At least not in the normal sense of a dog. I'll preface by saying I live where the Pawtuxet tribe lived in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and there is a demarcated native burial ground in my neighborhood for the native descendants through the 1890s. Most of the neighborhood was built in the late 1960s and early 1970s and had been a campground between that time and the period it had been occupied by the native tribe. Growing up, the house had been my grandmother's, and as a child, my mother moved my brother and me into the house for a time while my parents divorced. Nothing specific ever happened to us, per se, but you knew it was creepy in our neighborhood and definitely had a strong intuition to never go in the burial ground area, even though it abutted a pond park we'd play at. In the house itself, things made of glass would seem to accidentally fall from your hands and break, like someone punched it down, or just randomly fall and break in the same area of the house, whether it be the basement or living area, it's a ranch house. Aside from these, the house seems off, but you can't pinpoint why. When I was in my 20s, my grandmother couldn't live alone anymore, 
so I moved into her house again to prevent her from going to a nursing home. That's when I had a strange encounter with a white dog. About eight years ago, I was driving home late, maybe 2 a.m. There are old cranberry bogs that Ocean Spray used to run in the neighborhood, but they've been converted to preservation land and allowed to return to their natural state over the last 15 years. I am driving past these bogs, and as I go to bank up the sharp road corner at the end, I notice in the dirt road leading into the bogs, a large white dog. It was alone and sniffing around from what I could see with the street light. I thought it strange that someone let their dog loose, and I wondered if it had even snuck out since we have strict leash laws. Normally I'd continue by without actually acting on such thoughts, but for whatever reason, before I knew it, I was pulling into the dirt road area. Then, I got out of my car and started to whistle and call to the dog. Literally yelling, here, doggy, doggy. I have no idea why. That's when the dog, which looked like a tall, white greyhound type breed, turned to look at me, and I swear, it had no eyes, just black abysses. I froze and had no idea how to react, it was just so crazy looking. Then, as instantaneous as it had looked at me, it turned and ran into the bogs like it was scared of me. At that point, I knew that the dog was not right. There are still ravines in the bog from the irrigation canals, and although they've grown, there's no way the dog could have just run across them. I still have no idea what it could have been, as it was taller than any greyhound I'd seen, and its midbody was a bit more muscular, but its snout was what looked most like it, elongated and narrow. When I think of that encounter, I'm still so baffled and creeped out. I just can't understand why I even stopped or got out of my car. I still live in the area and have not seen that dog since or heard of a neighbor having a similar encounter, but I am too scared to look into those bogs at night and I'm always wondering what I saw. For visual reference I searched online for a dog that resembled what I saw because I just couldn't get over my experience. I was or am so spooked. The closest resemblance would be to a white borzoi. When I was in college, I used to work at the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs as a ghost tour guide. During the summers, we had a program called Campfire Tales where our tour guides would literally just head down to a bonfire in the back and tell guests tall tales and legends of the Ozarks rather than just the ghost stories of the hotel. As such, I learned many of the local stories. One story we told was that of the monster of Peterbottom Holler, a real location that wasn't terribly far from us. The short version of the story is that there is a terrible monster that lives in a cave at the bottom of the holler, described as covered in pale shaggy fur, smelling like rot, and standing 8 to 10 feet in height. In the legend, when it is first sighted, it's hunched over, tearing into an animal carcass. I lived in Fayetteville at the time and actually commuted back and forth to Eureka for work, about an hour's drive each way. Some nights I got off work very late at night. This was one of those nights. It was about 1 a.m. when I started back to Fayetteville along those narrow back roads. Given they were unlit and passed through some woods, I developed the habit of keeping a keen eye out for deer or other animals. As I rounded a bend, I suddenly came upon a very large animal of some sort on the shoulder of the road. Its pale hair reflected harshly and starkly in the light of my high beams. It was hunched over, munching on something, possibly roadkill. It was huge. Had it stood, it would easily be 8 to 10 feet tall. I slowed down as I passed it, particularly from caution and partially to gawk. But no matter how hard I scrutinized it, I had no idea what it was. Only one creature I'd ever heard of matched its description, but that was obviously impossible. Eventually, I had to drive on. Now, despite being a ghost tour guide, I'm a skeptic at best. I love the art of storytelling. I love folklore, legends, and tall tales, but I can't say I believe in any of them. I was baffled. The next day, when I went to work, I asked my co-workers about it. I described the creature, hoping they would simply know more about the wildlife in the area and have a reasonable explanation, but each one in turn was just as stumped as I was. Oh my god, did you actually see the monster of Peter Bottom Holler? One co-worker asked in astonishment. I felt incredibly silly answering that question at all. But about the fifth co-worker I talked to, he leaned back, scratched his chin, and said, sounds like a wild hog. His reasoning, we got them around these parts, they're bigger than most people think and will scavenge anything. Now, have I ever seen a hog with fur that long? Nope. But I'm so willing to accept that answer. A perfectly reasonable, non-supernatural explanation. I decided one day to go for a drive, as I often did back then. I headed south from Fairhaven to Burlington via Chuckanut Drive and proceeded to hop onto the freeway afterwards, south on I-5. I passed the Cloverleaf exit with the Wisconsin State Patrol as I entered the freeway. A WSP had Datsun 280Z pulled over on the Cloverleaf. I'm a car guy, and I noticed these things. I thought nothing of it and continued my drive, 
At which point I decided to take the next exit and head back toward Chukana through the mountainous roads I hadn't explored before. Up on those logging roads, I was alone. I found my way to what appeared to be an abandoned area for homeless or college kids, or who knows, felt uneasy, and beat feet out of there. I continued exploring for about 3 to 3.5 hours on those roads before heading back to Burlington to look around the car dealerships for something fun. It was getting late, so they were all closing up, so I headed back to I-5, and lo and behold, there's the same exact WSP officer with the same exact dots and 280Z parked in the same exact location, with the officer just getting out of his car and initiating the exact same stop I'd witnessed earlier in the day, I'm shaking as I type this out, I haven't spoken of this in 13 years or so. It was as if no time had passed. I looked at my clock, and all of a sudden it was 3.30 in the afternoon as opposed to 7.30 or 8 as it should have been, which was the exact time I'd passed the traffic stop prior. I called my parents from the car because I've been informing them at least of my general whereabouts during the drive, and they said almost no time had passed since I told them I was going to explore Chuckanut logging roads. What the duck actually happened to me that day, I'll never know. I'm an 18-year-old female. My family and I had decided to go on a cruise the following week, but due to Hurricane Harvey, we couldn't port back in Galveston, Texas, where our car was. We were dropped off at the port in New Orleans, and my dad, annoyed at the entire situation, had to rent a car due to hours being stuck in Galveston. From there, we were attempting to drive from New Orleans to Lubbock, Texas. We started early due to it being a 15-hour drive. My younger brother, who is 12 years old, was in the back seat listening to your channel through his headphones, and my sister, who was nine, was asleep. As time progressed, my dad got tired and asked me to drive some while he slept. I didn't mind, I was wide awake and honestly bored out of my mind. We pulled over on the side of the road, and we switched. I had a strange feeling, but I put it down to me being nervous that I'd take the wrong road and get lost. I'm not good with directions, and it had been raining really hard most of the drive there. I started back on the road, surrounded by swampy forest, and everything seemed fine. Soon, my dad was snoring away in the passenger seat, and I decided to listen to some music to calm my nerves. As the rain started to pick up, I had this feeling that I could only describe as knowledge of something terrible about to happen, but you didn't know what or when it would happen. I felt uneasy. I have listened to your channel quite a bit, and the only thing I knew that really caused that feeling was if a skinwalker or something of the same nature was nearby. I tried to block it out of my head, it was dark, and I thought to myself, I shouldn't focus on it, maybe it'll pass and everything will be okay. Then I heard it. It was like a mixture of what sounded like a coyote and a small child screaming. I have never been to Louisiana before, I had no idea if they had coyotes out there or not, but I grew up in a small town in Texas, and I've grown accustomed to the noise. Startled, I hear from behind me, Lexi. Did you hear that? My brother whispered to me, trying not to wake up my sister or dad. I was shocked that the scream itself didn't wake them. Yeah, I did. Don't think about it, just put back in your headphones and try to relax. He nodded. I could tell he was scared and didn't want to listen to me. But he knew I was right. As I'm driving, I can see something coming up in the middle of the road. At first, it looked like a deer. I was worried, this wasn't a car I could completely screw up. I had to give this back to the car rental place as soon as we got home. As I got closer to it, I realized its limbs were distorted. I started freaking out when it hit me that this wasn't a friend. Its eyes. They glowed yellow. Illuminating the darkness. I knew I had to be careful, I couldn't stop and turn around. I didn't know where I was or how to get home. I was relying on my GPS to show me the way, and quite frankly, I didn't want to do anything to make it follow us. I decided, as I was about 20 yards away, that I would go around it and pray to God that it wouldn't try anything crazy. I honked my horn at it, trying to see if it would go away. It looked up, I could see its face now. It had the face of a deer, but it was almost human-like. It mimicked the noise of the car horn back at me. I was scared out of my mind, and by this point, my dad had woken up. What the hell are you? What the hell is that? He asked me, fear rising on his face. I turned quickly, towards the other side of the road. I knew if I didn't hurry and pass this thing, I could end up hitting another car. Then we'd all be ducked to no end. As I passed it, it stood up on its hind legs. As if it were about to charge. But it didn't. It made another cry, like the one before, and walked slowly back into the wooded mess next to it. Relieved and still scared out of my mind, I moved back to my side of the road. I drove for what felt like hours, but it was probably only 30 minutes. My brother and dad didn't say a word, and I didn't either. We just wanted to get home. After a while, my dad switched me out, and the rest of the drive home was uneventful. 
Even though New Orleans was beautiful and different from a small Texas city, I don't think I'll be going back anytime soon. My great-grandmother had some pretty strange stories she told me, and I thought I would share some here. This first one is the story of the time she and her friends had an encounter with some sort of light on the road. They just got out of a party, and they were driving home. They were just going on about how the party was and all that. Then, all of a sudden, a pretty bright light popped out of nowhere in the middle of the road. They all sat there with blank faces. They stared for a while, but then they saw a hand come out of the light, and they hijacked it out of there. That was probably an alien encounter for me. But my grandmother had some other encounters that had to do with UFOs but there is one story I'd like to talk about. My grandma and Annie lived in a haunted house once. They had a ghost woman, or poltergeist, that would walk around the house during the day and night. The ghost was not aggressive, but very calm and nice. The reason I say it is also a poltergeist is because it picked up my relative, who at the time was a baby. My auntie and grandma were able to take the baby away from the ghost woman. Like I said, it was never aggressive, but timid. And it practically saved their lives. The ghost woman sat at the edge of my grandma's bed. And once it got her attention, the spirit went through the walls to the baby's room. The heat blanket had caught fire and was put out. My relative was fine and unharmed. If that ghost hadn't alerted my grandmother, my relative might not be alive today. Tonight I was driving to a friend's house in a neighborhood very close to mine. I drove the same route, one I've driven literally thousands of times, that I've always taken to her neighborhood. I live about 6 miles from the house in which I grew up, and my friend is currently back at her parents' place during the pandemic. I've lived here my entire life. Our part of town has not changed much in that time, but I've been around for most of the major changes regardless. In high school, I would drive from my parents' house to her house on an almost daily basis. The homes are 5 minutes away from each other, as the neighborhoods are on opposite sides of the same busy street. We used to joyride up and down all the streets in her neighborhood, blaring music and being dumb, you know, teenager stuff. There are three ways to get into this neighborhood, the main front entrance, the back entrance that lets out near a lake, and an entrance that connects through another neighborhood. I say all of this to say that I know this area like the back of my ducking hand. I know every street name, every cut through, etc. But tonight, when I drove my route to her house, again, the exact same route I have taken for 10 plus years, some insane shit happened. My route is easy, main entrance, left at the stop sign, next left, next right, down the hill, cul-de-sac on the right. Everything was fine until I made the next left after the stop sign. I drove for about 4 seconds before realizing that I didn't recognize anything. My car windshield suddenly fogged up, which I didn't think anything of until I defogged and found myself on a road that is split by double yellow lines in the middle, the neighborhood has none of these. I was super confused and disoriented, but I kept going, thinking I was just being dumb. I took my next right and still recognized nothing. Then I got to a stop sign, and across the street was a left right only yellow sign. I have never seen this shit in my life. I get more confused and turn left because, at this point, it's kind of in the same direction, and I have no idea what's going on. I stopped my car dead in the middle of the road right after I turned. Up ahead was a huge downward hill that was densely lined with trees on each side. You know that part in Lord of the Rings where Frodo and Sam are headed to Bree and Frodo sees the forest path elongate before him as the Black Rider is approaching? Yeah, it was that vibe. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that something was seriously messed up at this point. So, I turned back around. I retraced my steps and went back to the front entrance, turned around, came back in, and thought, let's try this again. I took the exact same path as before and made it to her house within 3 minutes. As it turns out, that's not the only weird thing that's happened recently. I told my friend what happened when I got to her house, and she said that yesterday she and her sister had gone to a yard sale in the neighborhood and had driven separately. She left to go somewhere else, and as she was waiting to turn out of the neighborhood, she saw her sister turn in and wave at her. But her sister didn't look at her. So she called her sister to ask if she saw her, and her sister was at home. The entire time. She had gone straight home after the yard sale and hadn't even left the neighborhood. Her mom confirmed it and everything. I don't know what happened then or tonight, but I genuinely believe I have just experienced my first legitimate glitch. I've been to Grey Cloud Island a few times, but it's in Minnesota, near the Twin Cities. So I was driving on the island with my girlfriend and cousin, and it gave you a really heavy feeling in your chest. It gives an overwhelming sense of sadness as well. So we're driving and talking about how we are feeling these things, and it's pretty small, so we were on our third trip around the island when we decided to go back because we weren't seeing anything spooky. I started to pull a U-turn from the paved road onto a dirt road. While we were facing down the dirt road, 
we saw a man walk out of the woods, like 200 feet ahead of us. There were no cars or anything, but he looked to be wearing some kind of rope. We all freaked out, and I was trying to reverse the car, but the car kept stalling. I was thoroughly scared when the car began to reverse. We got the duck out of there. Anyone know anything about Grey Cloud Island? When I was 24 years old, I drove all around the south end of Georgia, USA, in a hearse. I was used to driving in the forest for miles on end with no contact with anyone else. The only comfort I had was the radio. I liked it, even if it was mostly country rock and stupid love songs. It was around 11 p.m., and I was on this long stretch of road that I don't think anyone has been on for decades. By that point, I had been driving down this road for two hours, and it looked like there was no sign I was anywhere close to reaching the end. Soon enough, I had to take a leak, so I stopped the car and hopped out. I was and am a big dude, I think I was around 190 pounds. I have lost a lot of weight since then, but anyhow, I started peeing in the creek, and when I was done, I headed back for my car, but then I heard something. I darted my head back and saw this strange animal. It had red tentacles surrounding its mouth and these great big fangs with a strange green bubbly liquid oozing out. The rest of the body was mostly a dark yellow, apart from the red dots on its back, which seemed to be in a random pattern. It had slim skin like a frog and had the eyes of one too. It had a tadpole-like tail, but the strangest part was its legs. It only had two, and I don't mean it had two legs and arms. No, it just had two legs with large claws on them, and the ankles were raised like a goat, but they had a large spike sticking out of them like a dewclaw. It was making these awful, pig-like noises, it sounded like it just ran a marathon, and the green ooze didn't help. I froze for a good three seconds, and it did too, it had its legs spread like it was in a power stance. Once I snapped out of it, I bolted for my hearse and sped out of there. I didn't stay long enough to see if it was chasing me or not. So that's my story. I know the idea of a two-legged creature doesn't make sense because all vertebrates are known for their four legs, and it couldn't have been an invertebrate, that's for sure, so please, if you have any ideas on what I saw, please let me know. This all happened in 2016, if that helps. Late at night, me and two other friends decided to go to McDonald's for smoothies. After getting the smoothies, my friend, who was driving, wanted to show me and the other friend a random stretch of, sort of, abandoned road nearby where we were. As we were driving by, spooked by the atmosphere and abandoned goods on the side of the road, the friend who was driving mentioned how this road would be like a place Randonautica would recommend. At this time, I had never heard of the app, and he went on to explain it and say how spooky it is. I was interested but kind of just played it off. Once we left the abandoned stretch of road, I delved into curiosity and told my friend that I would get the app, much to his fear. Once we were entering my neighborhood, I searched for my first PowerPoint, and it told us to go right back to the sketchy, spooky abandoned road we were just at. It was a very freaky first experience indeed, and sadly, much to your guy's dismay, my friend was too scared to go back. What do you guys think? Is it a sign to go back? Just a coincidence? Any similar experiences? I'm an avid urban explorer, and in December, a friend and I drove to a location about 45 minutes away from home. It was in a small town in Pennsylvania. To get to the abandoned house and more or less crumbling house, we had to drive on a one-lane road through a forest. When we entered that road, there was a dead deer lying on the side of the road. Not uncommon, but it would be later on. Then her GPS malfunctioned and told us to return to the route, even though we were already on it. The arrow was pointing in the opposite direction we were going, away from the forest. We kept driving anyway and turned into the parking lot. There were only a few cars. There's a walking trail in the forest that people use to bike, run, etc. We go to the structure and an old water tower and take some pictures, and then decide to take a walk on the trail. We both started to feel really off, like there was a secret that everyone on the path knew except us. We were the only ones on the path, and we were walking and making small talk when we heard a bike bell behind us. We turn around, and a woman goes ahead of us on her bike and then stops to tie her shoe. We keep walking, and my friend says, look at her bike. There's no bell on it so we have no idea where the bell came from. There were only about four cars in the parking lot, but we ended up passing over 30 people. They all stared at us too, never breaking eye contact. Then my friend pointed out something, a boulder that had a stream of water trickling down it. But there wasn't a source or a crack, it was just starting from the middle of the rock. Again, it was weird. We kept walking down the trail, and I stopped and pointed into the forest. There was a tall, black figure standing by the trees. It looked like a man, but I couldn't make out any clothes or even a face. We were looking at it when there was a loud snapping noise right behind us, like a tree branch. 
We turned around quickly, but there weren't any sticks or branches on the ground at all. When we looked back in the direction of the figure, it was gone. All in about five seconds. The entire time, we felt drowsy and off, so we decided that we were going to walk back to the car and leave. There was no one else there, and there were no cars in the parking lot. We drove back through the forest road. We were only out there for about an hour. When we got to the intersection that brought us out of the forest, the deer was still on the side of the road. Except it was entirely bones. Just a skeleton. Not even bloody, it was completely clean. All that was left was the head, which was still on the skeleton. Nothing could have eaten or skinned it that fast, especially not without leaving any kind of fur or blood. At this point, we were freaked out enough and just wanted to go home. And then her trunk opened. There's a certain button on her car that you have to press, and her hands weren't even near it. She got out of the car to close it, and all of the doors in her car clicked and locked on their own. Except my passenger door. It stayed unlocked. We had service too, but her GPS wouldn't start to work again until we were out of that town. I don't really know what happened, but it felt like something in that place wanted us gone. And every time we pointed out something that was strange, something else would distract us from looking too closely at it. Does anyone know why they wanted us to leave? Or what could have caused it all? I'd love some closure on this, it still makes me feel uneasy. Sometimes I dream about it. And the same word always comes up when I dream about it too. The word harvest. I'd cry. So I had a very odd experience last night in the San Gabriel Mountains outside of Los Angeles. My fiancé and I drove up there at around 10 p.m. to stargaze. It was just the two of us. As we were driving up the 39, we were surprised by the number of cars in the turnouts. Very few were empty. Finally, we found a vacant turnout off the main road. About 10 minutes after we found the spot, a car pulled in, blaring music, and two guys jumped out of the car and proceeded to yell at us. We quickly drove away. They appeared drunk, and we assumed it was a coincidence. We returned to the main road and drove a mile back to a vacant turnout in a more public place, figuring it would probably be safer. 20 or so minutes after we arrived at the new spot, four cars pulled in and surrounded us. They then proceeded to line up next to us, and the final car seemed to be about to box us in. He hesitated, for whatever reason, and we darted away. One of them continued to follow us for the next several miles until he was cut off by another car. The first experience just seemed like some rowdy dudes, but the second one was clearly an organized group. Does anybody know anything about this? Or has anyone else experienced this? So I used to live near a really well-known forest for being haunted, known as Black Forest. Now, this forest is super creepy and very dark, hence the name. I had one very scary and startling experience while driving through this forest, which made me never step foot in the area ever again. On a weekend, I was invited to go hang out with some friends, and I had nothing else to do, so I agreed. It was around 8 or 9, so it was dark out. Now, there are two ways I could get to my friend's house. One, go through the black forest, or two, go around the forest and add about 20 minutes to my trip. I usually avoided the forest because the roads were somewhat confusing, and I just couldn't see very well because there was no light. However, today I felt impatient and decided to go through the forest. The ride to my friend's house was very uneventful, but the darkness of it all was very unpleasant, to say the least. I stayed at my friend's house and started to head back around midnight, or just around 1am now, this is when I had my experience. While I was driving, I looked at my GPS a lot because of the roads, and I always wanted to check where I was going because some of these roads look like actual roads but are actually driveways for a lot of these houses. I didn't want to trap myself in someone's driveway, so I checked my GPS a lot. So, I was driving and came to a stop in front of a red light, right under a very dim street light. It was still pitch black, and I was the only one on the road. As I was sitting there, I got a very weird feeling, as if someone were watching me. I then looked to my passenger side door, only to see this glowing, zombie-looking man wearing what I could only describe as rags. He didn't look alive, his skin looked like it was falling off. He was very grey in color, and he was just staring at me. I really thought my heart was going to explode because I was so scared. Even though the light was red, I floored it. But I wanted to see if the thing staring into my car was actually real, and right as I crossed through the median, I looked back. Nothing was there, and there was no way he could have gone that fast. I was spooked and drove all the way home, trying not to hit any red lights. This was before the big forest fire. This past Friday, I had a very strange experience while driving from my university through Lansing, Michigan, to visit some friends in the town of Mount Pleasant and go skiing with them the following day. 
It was incredibly windy when I left my house, probably windier than I have ever driven in, as I definitely had to slow down because of how much my family's giant GMC Acadia was being jerked around on the expressway by it, and I could very easily hear the wind outside over the music I was playing. Just after I had gotten onto I-96 towards Lansing, I started seeing these huge flashes of light in the otherwise completely dark sky. I had assumed it would be a sudden thunderstorm and turned on my windshield wipers, but no rain ever came. I later got off the expressway at the exit for the town of Fowlerville to get snacks at a gas station, and as I was sitting in my car, I started noticing lights similar to the lightning I'd seen earlier showing up in the sky, this time appearing in different colors and sometimes seeming to come from one location. I couldn't think of anything in the area that would produce lights like that other than Spartan Stadium at Michigan State University, but would the lights from the stadium, if something were happening there in February, really be visible from 20 miles away? I continued driving, and the lights seemed to be scattered everywhere, in different colors like light green, blue, and white. I would have taken a picture, but I was by myself and running pretty late, and I could definitely still see them appearing ahead of me after I had passed by Spartan Stadium. Is there anyone else here from that part of the Lansing area? If so, I'm really curious whether this can actually be easily explained, especially since, while I haven't found any news articles about this or anything, an online search reveals a history of supposed UFO sightings in the area. Maybe this is some strange form of lightning related to whatever weather formation was causing that insane amount of wind we were getting? I'm excited to hear what you all think it could have been. It's cool to have maybe seen a UFO while driving. Early 2009. I was leaving home for a night out on the town which was at least an hour's drive away. I stopped at a gas station just before getting on the freeway, about 40 minutes from my destination. It was dark outside around 9 p.m. I go into the gas station to grab a Red Bull and see a woman standing an island over from me. She was wearing a black leather jacket and had short blonde hair down to her jawline. I would put her age in the mid-30s or early 40s. I heard her ask the attendant, is 30 town north or south of here? This was a location everyone would know and I immediately thought it was a weird question. Why on earth would someone be at this place and be asking which direction this town a hundred miles away was going? Then it happened. She turned around and looked directly at me, and her entire eyes were completely black. I thought to myself, oh my, and I think I froze for a moment, not knowing what to do. I waved it off as strange and continued about my evening. The evening was fairly normal. I went out and met up with a few people, etc. As I headed home, I ran into a problem. I was driving home on the freeway, and there was hardly any traffic. There was a large, heavy-duty pickup truck following me way too close. I was approximately two-thirds of the way home at this point. I remember getting blasted by an all-encompassing white light. My brain processed it as light, but it seemed to not be directional, did not cast shadows, and filled up every space like a thick mist. The next thing I know, I'm still driving on the freeway, and the trucks are gone. I look over to the lane to the left, and some girl plasters her face and both hands on the window stairway, staring at me. I figured she was trying to build up some kind of hysteria or just acting goofy. I continued home, it wasn't until then that I looked at the clock and noticed two hours of missing time. Since this time, I have noticed a trend of women with shoulder-length blonde hair seemingly stalking me from time to time. Usually, when this happens, an event of extreme strangeness or paranormal activity occurs. I don't think it's the same woman, but they all fit the same profile. This story is 100% true. I have seen a werewolf, or, as some may think, the Kentucky Dog Man, on several occasions. I am 36 years old. The first time I saw the werewolf, I was 17 years old. I was driving from Dalton, Georgia, where my parents lived, to my grandpa's house in a small town in southwest Virginia called Pound. The town is located near the Kentucky state line, and my grandpa's house is located next to the forest. The forest completely surrounds his home. It was 3 a.m. when I drove up the gravel dirt road that leads to his home. Something felt odd as I drove toward the house, it was completely silent, no animal noises, not even my grandpa's dogs barking. The strangest thing was that not even crickets were making noises. It was April, and anyone who lives in this area will tell you this was strange. I knew this was unusual, I had lived there with my parents until I was 11 years old. As I got closer to the house, driving up the long driveway, I saw something strange walking down the road from the forest. At first, I thought it was a man who had on a ripped white shirt, a ripped dirty brown jacket, and ripped dirty blue jeans. At first, he was walking normally, then the clouds moved and revealed the full moon. That shined so brightly you could see everything. He was covered in fur, had long nails, even on his dog or wolf-like feet, had legs designed similar to those of a dog or wolf, 
had a long snout like a dog or wolf with long, sharp teeth, and was covered in blood and drool. I stopped my little aqua-colored Ford Taurus about three feet away from the creature. At first, I thought that I had fallen asleep and was dreaming that this could not be real. Then, when he noticed me, he smirked at me like a psychotic man. Then he leapt three times, then landed on the hood near my windshield. I screamed and realized this was no dream, it was real. The blood and drool dripped down my windshield. It clawed at my windshield. Then this werewolf reached over to my window on the driver's side door and began clawing and hitting the glass. I could tell this creature wanted to hurt me, or worse, even kill me. His eyes burned like fire, except they were a golden, yellowish-green color. I panicked. I slammed my car into reverse and hit the gas pedal to the floorboard. I backed up so fast and turned into my grandpa's neighbor's driveway. I slammed on the brake, which made the creature fly off the hood of my vehicle. I put it into gear and drove as fast as I could to get out of Rat Creek Road. I looked in the mirror several times to see if it was following me. So, I kept driving out of South Fork towards the town of Pound. This creature wanted me and was not going to give up without a fight. The creature ran up and grabbed a hold of the bumper of my car. I slammed on the brake, and the creature hit the back windshield and rolled to the ground. I hit the gas and speeded up even faster, trying to escape. Then again, the creature leapt from a tree up above the road and landed on the top of my car. The creature actually spoke and yelled at me to stop the car in a rough, raspy voice like a mixture of a human and a wolf or dog. The creature growled and groaned, hitting the windshield of my car. I slammed on the brakes, and the creature was flung to the ground in front of my car. I hit the gas running over the creature's legs, and it let out a half growl mixed with a scream of pain. I thought for sure that would stop it from following me. But, no, he was still following me. Tears ran down my face, and panic and fear were almost overwhelming. I knew at that moment that if I did not get away, this creature was going to kill me. The thought terrified me to my core, so I began to pray. I pushed on the gas pedal to speed the car up even faster. I knew that on these curvy roads, it was not safe to drive. But because I wanted to live, I ended up speeding my car up to 80 miles an hour to get away. The creature followed me almost all the way to town, but when I made it to the main road, he let out a blood-curdling howl and turned back. I went to my friend's house, her name is Sarah. I was freaking out, crying, and panicking. It took her 30 minutes to calm me down enough for me to tell her what had happened. At first, she did not believe me until I showed her the blood on the windshield and all the scratches on the hood, windshields, and driver's door and window. I had actually seen and had almost been attacked by a werewolf, or, as some people who I spoke to have told me, it was the Kentucky Dog Man. I survived, and I had proof that this happened to my car. I know not many people believe me when I tell them this story, but it did happen. I now actually live on the same land my grandpa's house was located on. If you're from the northern Wisconsin slash Upper Peninsula of Michigan area, chances are you're familiar with the Paulding Light. The Paulding Light is a light phenomenon visible practically any night driving off of Highway 45 outside of Watersmeet, Michigan. Legend states that the light is the spirit of a railroad conductor, destined to remain at the location of his death, forever waving a light to serve as a warning to any visitors. All very good material for campfire stories and spooking your friends. In high school, circa 2003-2004, I took my first trip out to the light with a few friends of mine. We were feeling particularly adventurous, and after parking our cars, we walked up to the barricade near the end of the parking area with some flashlights, planning to walk to the source of the light. When we arrived, we stood in the chilly evening air and thick darkness of the northern pines, staring at a faint light bobbing in the distance. None of us questioned that it was there, we'd all known people and family members who had seen it and shared their own experiences. Described as a benevolent spirit, none of us were scared and we were all expecting to see something upon our arrival. We weren't disappointed to be welcomed almost instantly by the appearance of the light when we got out of the car. It appeared to blink in and out of focus, moving erratically in between the trees. Giddy with nervous energy and teenage bravado, my friends and I began walking through the woods, determined to find the source of the light, or at the very least get a better look at it. We walked along a well-defined path without ever seeming to get closer to the light, finally losing it completely. Cold, bored with the novelty of our trip, and not without some anxiety about being in the woods at night, my friends and I turned back. The light was visible once again when we reached the trailhead. We all got back into the car and tore home along the back roads, recounting the experience and thinking it was pretty cool that we'd gotten any kind of look at the supposed ghost light. A few months later, a family friend was in the area visiting. She is a devout Catholic who has shared stories with me about participating in exorcisms and experiences with ghosts and demons. 
Our discussion at one point turned to the topic of the Paulding Light, and she expressed interest in visiting the area. Myself, my mother, our family friend, her husband, and my son all drove out to the area, discussing the story around the legend. I was expecting to see the same small light, far off in the distance, upon our arrival. When we parked at the trailhead, the same bobbing light was visible, bouncing about in the trees. Some say the light is simply due to swamp gases or lights off of the highway shining into the trees. However, what happened when we got out of the car convinced me that the Paulding light is most definitely something supernatural. As our small group moved through the darkness, quietly chatting to each other, the light stopped moving and seemed to hang still in the air. As we reached a metal barricade between the parking area and the forest, our family friend and her son gently grabbed onto one another. At that same moment, the light made a swift movement towards us and became intensely bright. I stepped backward with a small gasp, taken aback by the sudden movement. The light seemed to hang right in front of us, a large orb glowing gently until it slowly faded away and receded farther back into the woods, following the power lines that cut a swath through the woods. When the light rushed towards us, I was filled with a mixture of fear and wonder. I had never felt certain before that there were forces outside of the physical world that weren't always visible to our eyes. This experience solidified it for me. My friend and her son both said that the light had the sensation of a spirit or soul attached to it, and I feel that because of their otherworldly awareness, the light was more receptive to, and maybe even curious about, our group. The experience was surreal, and after the shock of what we'd witnessed, we all got into the car and drove quietly home. The drive home was a reflective, solemn trip through the dark woods, each of us absorbing what we'd seen. I haven't been back to the area since, but not for lack of wanting to. Time and distance have dulled the memory, but not the feeling I felt when that light rushed up to us, full of what felt like curiosity and as much wonder at us as we had for it. Me and my friend Ian had decided to head up to Overland Park, Kansas, to hang out with some friends. We arrived at my friend's house around 7 p.m. We hung out, lit off some fireworks as it was a couple days before the 4th of July, listened to music, and just generally bullshitted. Around 10.30 p.m., me and Ian decided to head back to my hometown of Lawrence, Kansas, which entailed getting onto I-70 and heading west. The highway was rather empty as it was a Wednesday night and most people have to work, but as kids getting ready for our first year of college, we had the summer off. After about 15 minutes of driving, we had seen barely any cars, and there were no cars in sight. I was looking out the passenger window to the right of the car, just taking in the cloudless night, the small rural houses, trees, empty fields, and fields of crops. Then suddenly, it came into my view. It was about 100 feet in the air and probably a couple hundred yards away from the highway, floating above an empty field and patches of trees. I immediately told Ian to look at it, and he too could see it. We both started freaking out, as it was like nothing either of us had ever seen before. It was a giant floating triangle hollowed out, with the tip pointing upwards towards the sky. There were lights inlaid in the triangle structure, changing extremely quickly from yellow to green to red and then repeating the cycle. As we passed by the UFO, we realized it was high enough that we were going to be able to see it for a couple minutes. I got out my phone to start filming it, and I shit you, not as soon as I pointed my phone at it, the screen turned black and wouldn't turn back on. That's when me and Ian really started getting scared. Did we know we could see it? What the duck was it, an alien, something ethereal, something human? We had no idea, but if it could interact with my phone, then we felt it had to know we were there. After a couple minutes, the object finally disappeared below the horizon, it hadn't moved the entire time. During the whole experience, we didn't see a single other car. We were pretty freaked out, and we just wanted to get home after that. I make deliveries on Cape Cod. In the spring of 2016, I was delivering in the Yarmouth slash Dennis area when I suddenly found myself driving down a bumpy road through the woods. I usually just zone out while driving and blindly follow my GPS, so I had no idea where I was. After driving for a while, the road widened and became a suburban neighborhood. Around a corner, I came across a stucco house with a big palm tree planted in the front yard. Later research revealed it to be a windmill palm that is tolerant of colder weather, it looks straight out of Florida. This is not a sight typically seen in Massachusetts. After driving off for a bit, I came upon a familiar area and made a mental note of where that palm tree was so I could find it another time. Back then, I wasn't delivering on Cape Cod consistently, so I didn't go back to that area for about a year. When I did, I tried to find it again so I could see how the palm tree held up, and the street I could have sworn it was on was a dead end. I thought I was only mistaken, so I drove around a bit looking for it to no avail. Later on, I used maps to scour the area for this house, and I looked everywhere. I looked at all the surrounding towns. I searched for hours over several weeks. 
I used Street View, I went back and looked at historical imagery from that year, but nothing. Not only does the house not exist, but the road, as I remembered it, doesn't seem to exist. I searched social media to see if anyone would have posted about this very curious house on Cape Cod, but nothing came up. I searched the local newspaper to see if there was an article written about it. I've asked other employees who deliver in the area if they have seen it. I've asked locals if they knew about it. Nothing. It's as if it never existed. It's wild. When I was 12 years old, my family would often go on road trips around the United States. We loved looking for the coolest, and creepiest, places to travel. Somehow, no matter where we were headed, we always managed to find something macabre, like an old cemetery or an insane asylum. My family was weird, I know. On a regular road trip, we would usually visit an allegedly haunted location, stay at an old campground that had been around for ages, and hunt for a well-known cryptid. My friends thought my family was nuts for believing in the paranormal. However, for me, it was normal. There was one specific road trip, the one that sticks out most in my mind to this day, that really shows what our family was like. We were heading to the Cranberry Run campground in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. It wasn't known specifically as a haunted campsite, but the local newspapers mentioned accounts of strange lights in the sky and people disappearing. My father, being a novice cryptozoologist and paranormal investigator, heard rumors of the area and had scheduled the trip for us on one of our summer vacations. Upon reaching the town of East Stroudsburg, everything seemed completely normal, but after going about a half mile down the road, my father suddenly pulled over. There was a large building in front of us. We stared at it like deer in the highlights, although it would be more accurate to say that we stared at what was right behind it. The mountain. I don't remember hearing any sounds at all, not even the traffic passing us by, and it seemed like everything just fell silent. Directly in front of us, one of the mountains was lit up, as though something was beaming light down upon it. My father, being the scientifically minded person he is, immediately looked ahead on the map to see if there was a road leading up the mountain so we could conduct an investigation. He found one, and we sped off toward the blinding light. He was so concentrated that we passed by a creepy, abandoned looking hotel without a second glance. I pointed it out to him, but he responded with disgruntled silence. I immediately shut up and let my father concentrate on his driving. Finally, we found the road that led up the illuminated mountain. At what seemed to be the halfway point, the concrete turned into a terribly rut-filled dirt road. As my father continued up the road, my mother and I were tossed around in the car. At this point, the road seemed to be more of a sand-type sediment, which was unheard of for a mountain in this area. It didn't even seem to be normal sand. After a few minutes, the car started to slow down until it came to a stop on the mountainous road. The engine wouldn't even turn over. My dad swore and fumbled with the key. I, on the other hand, was preoccupied with the black figures that stood directly in front of our car. We all sat motionless until my mother opened the door to step out. The second she touched the strange, sand-like substance, she immediately passed out as if it were from the fabled Sandman himself. My father yelled, unbuckling himself so that he could lean between the seats and yank her back into the car. As he slammed mom's door shut, the black figures pointed behind us, as if telling us to leave. Dad threw the car in reverse and made several attempts to start the car while I tried to wake mom up. It started working after a few minutes, and I kept a close eye on the figures while he backed us out of there. Mom woke up once we were back on the main road, and it took us all a while to process what happened. She kept insisting that the beings had wings, though dad and I hadn't seen them. I don't feel that they were there to hurt us, just to scare us enough to turn around and go back. This happened to me and a group of friends a couple years ago, when I was about 19. I've done tons of research and turned up nothing similar. So one night, me and two friends that I hadn't seen in a while recently got back in contact. I was bored, so I hit them up like, hey guys, I know it's been forever, but would y'all be down to hang out and maybe go for like a night hike? They were down and said they'd be right over. Me, excited to go for a night woods walk, smoke some weed, before you say, oh, you were just high, it's important to the story, and they picked me up to head out. We go get some food on the way, and while there, I ask if they want to smoke, which they decline because they don't smoke. So, me stoned, them sober as a bug. We get on the back roads to go to a patch of wood with paths, and while we're driving, I see it. On the side of the road, laying on its side like someone huddled over in the cold. It had a bright red face, almost like crazy bad road rash or something, it had a sheen to it. It was also dressed in dark, raggedy robes like the ones you see on fantasy monsters or witches. It scared the living shit out of me, but I was so excited to go to the woods that I thought to myself, okay, that was scary as f but you're probably just a little too baked and saw an old trash can. 
You're fine. Do not say anything to the girls because they'll definitely get a bad feeling, and our night hike will end there. So I didn't. I was silent about it and never mentioned it. Then we get to the parking lot in the woods. I'm looking at my phone, and one of my friends, in a scared tone, says, what the duck is that? I was overcome with fear instantly, like I had an instinct or something, and without looking up, I muttered, what is it? This SHT chills my bones to this day. She said, I don't ducking no, it's freaky, it's like a homeless man with a bloodied face watching us from the pavilion. I'm like crapping myself at this pint, and the other friend says, he's just watching us, it looks like his clothes are made of rags, I said, let's just get the hell out of here, and then I told them I saw exactly that on the road earlier, but I thought I was just crazy. I was so frazzled by the whole thing that I tried every way to rationalize it. We thought maybe it was a black trash can with a red dome lid, and the bag was over the edge, so I went back the next day, and there was absolutely nothing under that pavilion, no barbecue, no trash can, just a table. It took me a year to go back, and I still won't go after dark. I am a 24-year-old who has spent the majority of her life outdoors, camping and hiking through wild terrain. I have also been studying zoology and biology for the last six years and have been in close proximity to bobcats mid-hunt, protective mama bears, and territorial elk. I'm disclosing this because all of these experiences have been quite scary, but I have never been more terrified than I was the night I encountered an unknown entity in northern Arizona. In March of 2018, I decided to go on a backroad drive with a friend of mine at about 2 a.m. That area is well known for almost zero light pollution, which makes the night sky mesmerizing on a clear night, which that night was. The area I was driving in was a thick pine forest, and I was on alert because of the large elk in the region. After about an hour, my friend and I made it to a paved road leading back towards home. The road was in a T-shape, and we were stopped at a stop sign, taking a moment to update our playlist. I'm about to shift out of the park when I look about 30 feet in front of me. I'm facing the pine tree line that my headlights are illuminating. The tree line sat along a small 5-foot ridge that was parallel to the road I was going to turn onto. I noticed a door-sized block in my view that appeared to be warped. It looked like I was underwater and looking up at the surface, the image was just distorted and constantly shifting within the frame. Very odd. I sat there for a while before I told my friend that I thought I was hallucinating. To clarify, I was not under the influence of any substance and hadn't been in almost a year at that point. I was concerned and was about to suggest they drive instead since my vision seemed to be impaired. That is, until they told me that I wasn't hallucinating they were witnessing the same thing. Without looking away from the block, we both described the exact same image, so at this point, I'm a bit freaked out. We're pretty logical people and didn't want to jump to any conclusions, there must be a rational answer. So of course we do what sane people do on a dark back road, we put my car in park and get out of the vehicle, I know, not smart. We kept my headlights on as we crossed the road heading towards the distorted block and noticed that as we moved, the portal wasn't moving from its original spot, so it ruled out any kind of fumes possibly interfering. As I reached the ridge that the portal sat on top of, my friend stopped. He said that it didn't feel right and that he thought we should go back to the car, he's smarter than me. At that point, I was more intrigued than scared, and I was already within 10 feet of the thing, so I might as well finish the job. I started walking up the five-foot incline when I was filled with the most intense dread that I had ever experienced. I could almost reach out and touch the warped doorway when my foot softly planted itself directly in front of it. At that exact moment, the most horrendous noise erupted. It sounded almost as if someone had dropped a metal tank out of the air, it was the loudest metallic crash that I had ever heard. I was startled by the noise, lost my footing, slipped down the ridge, and caught my footing right as I was next to my friend. We both looked at each other in scared confusion when the night air filled with what sounded like three dozen coyotes calling. I'll admit, it's pretty common for coyotes to call out in groups, they're kind of known for it, but what's unusual about this specific situation was that the three dozen coyote howls sounded like they were screeching in our ears. It was so loud that we had to cover our ears as we ran to my car. I felt like I was about to be attacked by all of them, and they were about to jump on me because of how close their screams were. As I was running back across the street, I was looking desperately for the coyotes to determine how many there were, but not a single one was in sight. As soon as we slammed and locked the doors of the car, the noise that was almost debilitating at the moment went completely silent. Nothing. Not a single peep. I looked up as I was shifting into drive and saw that the warped portal was now gone. I confirmed with my friend that he no longer saw it either and drove the hell out of there. We got home in record time, ran inside my home, and discussed what happened until the sun came up. We both encountered the exact same phenomenon out there on that road. We both saw the warped apparition and heard the same noises. 
we were both filled with a nauseating dread and were hysterical about what we had experienced. We couldn't solve it logically and were desperate for answers the next day when we started speaking with some friends who grew up on the local Navajo reservation. When we shared the experience, they were all convinced that we had encountered a skinwalker. When I first heard the term, I was sure that they were kidding, but they truly believe in it. They grew up with warnings from their elders, so the fear they have for this thing is real. Some would even walk with blessed ash on their foreheads to discourage skinwalker encounters, a sort of protection charm. I was told that a skinwalker scream is similar to crashing metal and that the coyote noises were the skinwalker trying to disorient us. So I looked into other skinwalker encounters, and it's a real, inconsistent mess of stories out here, but I have come across a few that are similar to my own experience. The main issue that I have with this explanation is that I never saw a humanoid, just a transparent doorway. Other people who don't think I'm batshit crazy have suggested a possible alien encounter. Their reason was the metallic clash that we heard. I'm not as convinced by this possibility, but hey, I'm open-minded. If you have any insight, questions, or redirections about these theories, then please share them with me. Of course, no one will really know for sure what I encountered, but I know that whatever it was in that forest was nothing that I've ever studied or come across before. I knew that I was in the presence of something supernatural, something that was dangerous. I know a lot of people who have had weird, unexplained things happen to them in the high desert regions, and now I know why they don't go out alone anymore. I also didn't take any photos because my phone was the last thing on my mind, if I'm being honest. It was also night, and even with my headlights on my phone, the quality of the camera wasn't good enough to capture what I saw. So this occurred back in 1997 when I was in my 20s in a local state forest. The forest has many access roads and intersects four towns. I was with a girlfriend at the time, and we liked to take long drives and smoke. We would drive around this forest aimlessly about once a week, usually at night. This one night, it was very foggy and creepy, so I was driving slowly as the dirt roads were unlit and tight. I had a new F-250 truck that was only about 3-4 to four months old. So we are driving along, and we come to an open area. I slow down to a crawl as the fog gets really thick and I can't see very far. All of a sudden, every light in the truck turns off. It is pitch dark, but the truck is still running. So I fool around with the switches, trying to get something to work, and I ask my girlfriend to reach into the glove box for my flashlight. For a minute, I'm thinking about what if it doesn't turn on, but it does, thankfully. So I'm hanging out the window, pointing the flashlight, and trying to creep along. We get about a one quarter mile down, and then all the lights turn back on, even the radio. At first, I chalked it up to an electrical issue, but as the years went by, I kept that truck for 10 plus years and never had that happen again. In the summer of 2007, when I was still in high school, I was a sophomore, so when I was 15 to 16, my family and I went to spend it in Mexico, in a small town in Michoacan, to visit my dad's hometown and family as well. This was a very small rural town surrounded by mountains and forests, pretty much everybody knows everybody's type of vibe. Anyway, my brother and I didn't really have much to do there since it was isolated from big cities and there was pretty limited technology there, so it was pretty boring and we were forced to be outside. We started hanging out with my dad's friend's kids, and we all became good friends. One day we started talking about paranormal stuff when we were all hanging out, and my brother is a huge skeptic, so he started exclaiming that it wasn't real to him until he saw it for himself. Our new friends looked at each other, giving each other a smirk, then told us that there is a lot of stuff that happens around the town that no one can explain, and then they urged us to get in their truck because they wanted to show us something. There were five of us, so we all squeezed into the crew cabin of the truck, and they started driving towards the main road that exited the town. They drove for about 25 minutes until they came to a small dirt road that led into the forest. I remember being scared because we were driving for 40 minutes through darkness with just the light of the headlights lighting up the road, and we were on curves driving along the mountainside on a narrow dirt road. We finally descended onto another dirt road that led to a pond that was in the middle of an opening in the forest. Our friend driving went near the pond and parked the truck, he then turned to us and said, watch this, and turned off the car's headlights. A couple seconds into doing so, we began to hear little rocks being thrown at the truck, all over the truck simultaneously. It felt like it was hailing, but with a certain rhythm. He turned on the headlights, and almost instantaneously, they stopped. He turned them off, and it continued. He did this for about 5 minutes, showing us how they stopped and continued, then dared us to go outside. Our friend that was sitting in the passenger seat said those were duendes, gnomes, and told us not to listen about going outside, then told our friend driving to leave now before they get more aggravated, and by the sounds of it, there were a lot of them. Of course the friend driving didn't listen, he shut off the engine but left the headlights on and cracked the windows down a bit so we could hear outside, 
and we started to hear scampering in the grass and tree branches moving aggressively all around us. He turned off the headlights one last time, and again rocks began to be thrown at us, but this time the force of the rocks felt like they were closer than before, and some rocks actually seeped through the cracks of the windows and were hitting us. Our friend in the passenger seat finally had enough and yelled, let's get out of here now, and the driver finally complied because we were all freaking out. He turned the car on, turned on the headlights, which caused them to stop, and drove off. We talked about it as we drove home. My brother, still skeptical, said it could have been monkeys or some type of animal, but I saw his face when we were there, and he was scared. But he tried being the macho older brother, and I was scared. The friend driving laughed and said, there are no monkeys in these parts, mostly only boar, mountain lions, deer, and vermin. I honestly don't know what it was, but I know what I heard, and of course I am a believer. My brother thought maybe it was a prank, but the way the day turned out, how we all went out there in the first place, and the fact that not all kids had cell phones back then or even there at that town. To gather so many people to wait there all far from town for us and throw rocks at us, it's impossible. My sister and I have always been into the paranormal. I've seen a few things in my life, but never anything that terrified me as much as what we saw in that forest that night. This happened three months ago, and it still scares me when I think about it. So my sister and I were actually just riding around, bored, trying to come up with something to do. I came up with the great idea of going to the forest since it's only 20 minutes away. So as we're driving there, we get about 5 or 6 minutes from the forest, and I start to hear this strange sound coming from inside my car. It gave me the chills, but my sister didn't hear it at first, so I checked everything in the car, making sure the radio was off completely. Even the heat was off, and I made sure all the vents were closed so there was no air coming through them that could possibly be making this noise. Right at that very moment, it grew louder, like it was clear as day, and at this point, I knew my sister was hearing it from the look on her face. It literally sounds like some kind of Native American tribal music, maybe? I still don't know, but that's the best way I can describe it. The first thought I had was that it sounded like someone was playing a flute inside my car. I have a Honda Accord, so the front seats can only fit two people, and yet this music was clearly coming from right in between us, as if someone were sitting in the back seat, and they were leaning forward and playing this music right in between both of us. This went on for a good four to five minutes and stopped when we arrived at the forest. Although it freaked us out, we were more excited than anything for some reason. So the forest has trails everywhere. You can ride your car through or walk. They have campgrounds and parks for children. It's really a beautiful place. Okay, so the second that we arrived, I immediately had this sick feeling in the pit of my stomach, and my heart was just pounding. I told my sister I felt it was safer for us to just ride through in the car. I mean, it was like 12 AM at this point and super dark. So when we first entered, we drove through where the campgrounds were and everything and we drove a little deeper in and came to this one park. For some reason, we both decided to just get out and sit in front of my car to see if anything happened. The first thing that I noticed was how eerily quiet it was out there and how very dark it was. I could hardly see much, so I turned on the car headlights. At first, it really was quite amazing stuff happening, but I wasn't afraid. Like I said at first, it was so quiet that I could hear my own heart pounding, and the air was somewhat thick, it almost seemed like it was slightly harder to breathe. I do remember telling my sister, this is wild, like I don't hear anything, literally nothing, not even an animal walking through the forest, just absolutely nothing. About 10 minutes in, I'm starting to hear shouting in the distance, but not super far away, I knew for sure that it was the sound of men shouting. Then I started hearing gunshots everywhere. It sounded like we were in the middle of a war as the sounds grew closer and louder. I wasn't afraid, though it was actually pretty cool. So that went on for maybe a few minutes and then stopped. My sister and I stayed for maybe another 25 to 30 minutes, and with nothing else happening, we decided to drive to another part of the forest. As soon as I got into the driver's seat, this feeling of complete terror came over me. It made me feel so sick to my stomach that I almost vomited. My ears and my face were also burning up, like I had the worst fever I could imagine. My ears were just so hot. I told my sister several times that my ears were on fire and my stomach was upside down. We need to go somewhere. We debated for a couple of minutes, and she wanted to stay a little longer because she said she also had a feeling of some kind of presence being there. So not even two minutes later, I heard my sister say, what is that? As I was looking down at my phone, I looked out the passenger window at the tree line where she was staring, and at first I saw nothing. Then, out of nowhere, it was like the darkness lifted just a little to the point where I could clearly see something peering out at us from behind a tree. My feeling of dread grew so much worse at that moment, but not wanting to scare my sister even more, I said, it's just a deer we should probably go through. 
We could see its glowing eyes just staring right at us. But it was something about the eyes. I just knew it wasn't right, and I knew it wasn't a deer. So as we're about to pull off, this thing stood up like a human would, except it was much larger. I wanted to leave that second but couldn't help but see what it was doing, and it just out of nowhere jumped off the ground, literally to the top of the trees, and I lost it from there. It's worth mentioning that the trees at the Pocomoke State Forest are super tall, so whatever it was, it wasn't right. That's the best way I can explain it. It just wasn't natural, although it did look like an animal, it didn't at the same time. Without hesitation, I peeled the hell out of there, afraid of what this thing might do. The park was already closed, so as I got to the entrance, the gate was closed. I rolled down my window, screaming, someone open this gate now, or I swear I will run through it. So they opened it, and I dipped so fast and never looked back. I've never been back to that forest since, but I have had a few strange things happen since. That very same night, after I dropped off my sister at her house, I heard that music again in my car for about a minute, and it scared the hell out of me, but it oddly gave me this calm feeling that came over me, and I wasn't scared anymore. Then it went away just like that, and I've never heard it since. No matter how hard I try to forget, it's like I just can't unsee what I saw that night. I am now 21 years old, and this encounter happened about 10 years ago, so I understand if some people would dismiss this story as the imagination of a boy running wild. And, to be honest, I would really like it if that were the case, and I was just imagining things, but unfortunately, I don't think I was. I live in a small city in the northern part of Greece. Just outside the residential area, there are forests all around the city. One night, around midnight, me and my family, dad, mom, and sister, were driving through one of the forests on our way home from a dinner party. We are coming up a Y intersection on one of the split roads towards the road where the two split roads merge. As we get on the merged road, for whatever reason, I stand on my knees to look out the rear view window towards the intersection. On the other road from the intersection, there was what I reckoned to be a construction site with bright floodlights facing our way. That's when I saw it. A dark silhouette walked across the road, and as it passed right in front of the floodlights, I was able to take a good look at it. It was darker than anything around it, zero illumination from the floodlights like a black hole sucking in the light, no clothes, no facial features, no hair, but its proportions were human. But it was definitely not a human. It just crossed the road and disappeared into the forest, and it didn't seem to notice us. I turned to look at my family to see if they had also seen it, but they were all facing to the front. I was the only one who saw it. I never brought it up with my parents or anyone else because I knew all I would receive were some weird looks. I've never had a similar experience since, but whenever I come back to this one, it baffles me that it's the only event in my life that I haven't managed to logically explain. In late December 2016, darkness came early to the woods of my home county, Kent. Mud splashed up on my car as I assaulted the camber of a sordid country lane. The leaves on the ground had turned from pretty to pulpy, and the trees were bare and white. Familiar taste of poison was on the radio, and there was a perpetual tap of rainwater on the roof. In the back were two paranormal investigators, my lovely heathen girlfriend, I'm Catholic, but where am I meant to find a tig bitty cryptid hunter goth at mass? And her security guard friend, who'd come on hunts with us and thought it was cool. The air fell pregnant with anticipation as we pulled up in a lay-by. Let me explain, a few months earlier, we'd been driving through this same wood when there was still light in the evening, and that same girlfriend had seen something pale, humanoid, and white moving through the trees. I didn't think much of it because I've been a paranormal investigator for seven years, since the age of 18, and pale, white humanoids are just a thing that can be found in the woods. Flip forward to that month, and we'd sighted an abandoned car on the edge of the woodland, a blue 2001 Rover. I ran its make, model, and number plate on the vehicle inquiry service. Text. I checked local crime reports. Not stolen. Apart from scratches and bumps, there was no damage to the chassis or paintwork. Then, not long after, I was driving through again, the woods are quite close to my home, and turned down a steep, 24% gradient single track road with few passing places. A half ton stump of oak blocked the road halfway down. It had been pulled out of the ground. There was still earth on it, and there is no room for a tractor or a digger up there. Lorries haven't got a chance. So, the hunt was on. That night, we'd done all the usual spiritual protection measures, carried big sticks, and offloaded into a lay-by near a path that led into the woods. We pounded up a narrow defile after an introductory field, which opened on the lee of the main wood overlooking a cleared valley, and then walked through. There were no problems at this point. We had heads on a swivel and sticks ready, and aside from the hooting of an owl and occasional rustling, there was no sign any creature was awake. We filtered through a narrow, 
single file section with tightly packed trees and came to another field. We reached the path that led out onto the road, miles from our entry point. Nothing happened. So we spread out and started to nose around in the undergrowth. I hacked through a few bushes, inspected a few runs, and found trails. Something bigger than any wild animal in the UK was about, and, wait. Those footsteps were of a biped. A small one. Not the hulking thing my girlfriend had seen. Possibly a cryptid, possibly a fat chicken. We decided to retreat as the bushes, particularly the holly, got thicker. A midget had a distinct home field advantage. But on the way back through the tightly packed bit, we began to hear something following. It didn't seem to come closer than the entrance, then we heard movement off to the side, a jittery, uncertain sort of clack that did not build up or slow down, it started then stopped, energetic then not. The owl's hooting began to coincide with it, which slowly turned the owl from, you know, just an owl to a near constant presence in our minds. When we got back out to the main wood, the clacking and rustling gathered pace and came from multiple directions, mostly from up the hill to our right. I volunteered to go at the back because, after an encounter in 2014, I really wanted to take a swing, but the gradual crowding of the creatures implied that wasn't going to be an option, so as we began to run out of room, even as we picked up pace, and it became harder and harder to keep formation, I remembered a trick from my youth, an eagle scream. I did eagle impressions as a kid, using some tightening deep in the throat, and it was so loud and unexpected that the pattern of the rustling was broken, as if our stalkers did a double take. We used that opportunity to have it away on our toes, back into the defile, bordered by thorns and a barbed wire fence, where we had the commanding position, they would have to run at us, straight onto the sticks. They didn't have a chance at it. While we heard them move some time after the scream, they didn't come anywhere near the road, and the excitement had died down long before we reached my car. I've yet to go back in, only because they don't seem to be that much of a danger. Farmers have seen them run across fields, but rarely. Dog walkers go through there all the time. There are horses in the surrounding fields and a few homes on the edge of the forest. Me and my friend were driving two weekends ago from the Bay Area back to our homes in Santa Cruz, California. Highway 17 is the final twisty, narrow forest highway that takes you into Santa Cruz. It is a notoriously dangerous drive with lots of deaths and generally just dark, forest spooky vibes. Most of the highway has no shoulder, just rock faces or trees directly next to the road. It is a 16-mile stretch with no gas stations or really anything, minus a few homes tucked away. It was 3 a.m., we were just about 4 miles deep, coming up the hill, when we saw a man standing on the side of the road. He was facing away from us. He was standing straight and perfectly still. All black clothing, including some type of hat. There were very few cars coming by. Maybe one a minute. He must have been standing there still, even before we had come around the corner. He was just staring at the forest, about 5 feet from the edge of the road, on a very narrow shoulder. He was not relaxed, it was stiff and straight, with his arms out a little wider than what would be typical and comfortable. It was so unsettling. The most unsettling part is that there were no parked cars for the four miles prior to seeing him, and no parked cars for another six miles. We counted. He was just alone somehow, on the side of a highway that was not able to be walked along. Spooky. I'm not sure what to make of it, but it has definitely stuck with me and haunted me a bit since. I grew up in a rural part of Maryland, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone within 10 square miles, and it took 30 minutes to get to the nearest department store. Our house was positioned between a cornfield and a forest. The road leading to my house was about 6 miles long, and the only people who ever drove down it were the handful of people that lived back there and the occasional archaeological van that would do digs in the plot next to our house when the farmers would turn the fields over. Anyway, in 8th grade, I had this witch experience that I haven't been able to shake, and I had other people with me. My friend's dad was driving me home in his three-seater truck with my friend sitting between us. We got to the stretch of road where we could see my house across the field, they planted soybeans that year, so the corn wasn't blocking our view, and in the ditch right by the road was a figure I can only describe as a witch. We all saw her, and we drove right past her. The ditch lining the road was about two feet deep and somewhat overgrown, and we could only see the upper half of her body, as if she were sitting cross-legged in the ditch. She was wearing an off-white nightgown that was stained brown, and her hair was black and tangled. She was looking up into the sky with her arms extended toward the sky, and she was rocking in a circular motion. I know it sounds ducking ridiculous, but all three of us were totally uncomfortable. My friend dad was rough around the edges, a carpenter, no bullshit kind of guy. I remember really feeling scared when he asked us, what the hell was that? She didn't look like a homeless person or a drug addict, 
and we were so far from any town that we literally never had a single person in the 20 years I lived there wander into our area who didn't belong there. She legit looked like she came from another time period and was sitting in our ditch trying to summon a ducking tornado. When we got home, my friend's dad walked us inside, which he didn't normally do because my parents didn't socialize with my friends. He came in almost as if he wanted to kill time to not drive back by her again. He told my parents what we had seen, and we couldn't see her from our house, so we called the police just in case it was someone in need of psychiatric help. My friend and his dad left after a couple minutes, and the police came about 20 minutes later and said they didn't see anyone in the ditch and couldn't find anyone walking in the fields or roads in the surrounding area. My friend's dad called us once they got home and said that by the time they drove by the spot on their way home, she was gone. I truly cannot explain it. My friend's dad has since passed, but my friend says they still talk about it every now and then in the years following. For the last month or two, birds have been flying in front of her towards my car. In the city, farm country, the suburbs, wherever I am, no matter what speed I'm going. Sometimes it's straight across my windshield, other times it's towards one of my side windows, and they yeet in the other direction last second. The first few times, I thought it was nothing, but then it felt like they were trying to tell me something. The problem is, I have no clue what, and I think they're getting annoyed. At this point, I'm basically two months deep, and this is happening anywhere from one to ten times a day. For reference, I drive 35 minutes each way to work every day through a couple suburbs and lots of farm country, the occurrences escalated for a while, during which I saw my close friend, who can attest to this all happening. Today, I got home from work with only two bird encounters from my trip and set up my laptop to work on a school assignment. I'm sitting at my desk doing some research on a shitty politician, and a small bird flew into my window, bounced off, and flew away. So here I am, asking if anyone has ever had something like this happen or can give me insight into what the hell is going on. So, this was probably four or five years ago. Four friends and I had been talking about ghost experiences and such when we decided to try and find some places to go investigate for fun. A quick bit of research, revealed some stories about a place called Old House Road. Claims of a witch, green lights from the ground, and a ghost ship that sailed over the beach and anchored. We decided to take the three-hour drive to visit. The road itself was probably a mile and a half, maybe two. Gravel Road is surrounded by grass, weeds, and plants six tall. It's right by the water, on a little private beach. On this road, maybe two slash three RDS of the way, is a little old, abandoned, ducked up house. And there was not a single source of light throughout the whole stretch. So, we drove all the way down, noting that it's pretty ducking dark down here. We parked by the beach, stepped out, and walked as a group towards the house. We take a couple of turns and such before we reach a long, straight way to the house. We're waking and talking, searching for things with our flashlight, when someone points out a light in the distance. This light, we all observed, was down near where the house was, but directly in the path. We kept walking, slightly cautious now. This is when we realize that the light is getting closer than we expected. We stop, and the light continues to come closer. It's at this point that I observe that it's not like a flashlight or car light. This is a torch, or a lantern, swaying slowly back and forth as it approaches. And it's not illuminating anything behind it. My friend, Jay, as we'll call him, is the only other one in this group who has had experience searching for things like this. He taps me on the shoulder and whispers, shark attack? He meant that the lantern was a distraction. So we both turned around, just to see two small red lights peering over the six grass before quickly dropping back into said grass. At this point, everyone else is transfixed by the light ahead. So me and Jay calmly turned everyone around and said tonight is not the night to be ducking with this. We got everyone back to the car calmly before explaining what we saw. Once at the car, I decided to step back and see if anything had followed. I walked towards the first turn, where I could still be seen. I heard some movement ahead, said hello, and was promptly hit by a rock. It was not hard, it was on my knee. More confusing than anything. So, I asked, the duck? To which I received another rock. This time, to my chest. I got it, that means GTFO. So I go back, we all get in the car, and I decide to go home. It's worth noting that on the drive down the road, we saw absolutely no signs of lights, people, or anything. Just the same empty road we'd taken to get there, we left Old House Road shortly after. At this point, we discussed the fact that we drove 3 hours to spend 15 minutes in one spot. Consensus was ducking that. So we looked for a place that was on our path home. And boy, did we find something? I will probably never remember the name of the bridge, but I'm sure I could text Jay and find out. 
The place was an overpassing bridge in the middle of nowhere, on some side street that was probably 10 to 15 miles long. We drive over there, and someone reads the claims out to everyone. The story is that there was a bride who ran from her arranged marriage on her wedding day, running over this bridge, stopping and jumping off in her wedding gown, and dying. Neat, right? Coupled with that was very factual and documented evidence of KKK activity in the 1970s or 1980s. They'd hanged many black men out on this road, hanging off trees right next to the road. Not so cool. What were the problems, you ask? They say if you park your car under said overpass, you could hear the bride fall onto your car, see hand prints on your mirrors, but see no corpse. They also claim that if you park there, your battery will die and your car will be inoperable. Two companies come out a lot, apparently. Further down the road, people claim to have seen dead men hanging in the trees. We go down this road, and this overpass is nestled neatly in the lowest part of the valley, made by two moderate-sized hills. You can see the top of the other side around the bridge. Not very intimidated, we made the decision not to stop under the bridge, for we were an hour from the house, and just duck that. We drove under the bridge and saw, well, nothing. Uneventful. So, we continued down the road. I can't explain how dark this road was. No streetlights, no signs, no. Anything. Just dense woods on either side of the street. As unsettling as that was, we found a little wider dirt shoulder and turned around, maybe one third down the road. Back under the bridge, we go. Pass number two was interesting. We go down the hill and pass the bridge, and as we do, the car lights very noticeably dim and come back. Everyone saw it. Intrigued now, we turn again and, like typical white people, drive down once more. This time, the car audibly stutters, and we all feel it. Well damn. We turn, cross the fourth time, and the car radio shuts off and the car almost completely stalls. This is the point where we should call it. It's close to the witching hour, we've already had an encounter, and the car is threatening to die on us. But, alas, we're dumb. Onward. We drive, and as we approach the bridge, we see headlights on the other side. So we stop, feeling slightly compelled too. This is where it gets weird. We had a couple people recording at this point, and we all very distinctly pointed out two pairs, that's four, right? Of headlights descending the opposing hill, a singular cop car pulls up to us. This man is not wearing a uniform or badge but is driving a local police vehicle. He rolls down his window and stops. No blue lights. He tells us that they've been monitoring our traffic pattern since we'd been there and told us it was illegal to be driving back and forth on this road like that. To top that all off, he just seemed. Not normal. His facial expression was fairly locked in place, he spoke really slowly, deliberately, and was just off-putting. I apologize that I can't really put it into words, but he just felt wrong. It's hard to describe. I am still confused as to what occurred. Since we're having a three-day weekend here in the US, I decided to meet and explore Virginia with my friend. All in all, our plan was to stay away from city areas and explore the inner lands. Our best bet was to explore the channels, as it would allow us to hike and camp nearby, all while not being alone as it was a tourist destination. I took the train from NY to DC to meet him, as we had planned to drive up to Virginia. Everything was going fine, and we were having a good time until a pit stop at the gas station. Here's where the confusion starts, I'm so amazed at this that I need to put it in bullet points. My friend gets out of the car and pumps gas, then walks over to a small supermarket to get us some snacks. I stayed in the car and took the opportunity to try to check for nearby Wi-Fi. I see my friend walk into the supermarket, and I know this for sure because I was planning to capture an image of him with my Pentax. As I'm doing this, my friend comes back into the car, looks directly at me, and asks me where we are headed. I looked over at him and laughed and said, you are a driving idiot, use the GPS then asked him where the snacks were. My friend looks really annoyed, and I can see on his face that he was a little pissed. He didn't say anything in return, came out of the car, and walked away. I didn't take this too seriously, and I've known him for years, and we've argued back and forth before. Here is where it gets weird, not even a minute later, I see my friend walking out of the supermarket with bags. I looked over at the other side and at the back of the car to see if anyone was there, and I saw no one. I am extremely confused at this point. Eventually, my friend gets in the car and starts showing me the snacks he bought. I asked him if he was here before, like literally a minute ago, and he said no and asked if I was crazy. He said that he was in the supermarket and had never come back to the car since he left. I told him what happened, and he insists that I was daydreaming. But I know I wasn't. I know I was fully awake. Anyway, there was nothing to argue for, 
and I figured maybe I was daydreaming, or at least told myself that. We decided to just continue on our trip. About 40 minutes later, we were driving through a forest area, and I told my friend to slow down as I wanted to take some photos. He eventually stopped and decided that he needed to piss, so I took the opportunity to follow him at least halfway, where I could take pictures inside the forestry area without being alone. We entered a walkway area, and my friend went deeper into the side path among the bushes, where he wasn't visible to me anymore. I have to say that it was the gloomiest view, and it gave me the feeling that we weren't there alone. I put both my phone and camera away to observe the moment and what felt forever as well. I got a bit agitated, as I didn't like the feeling of being alone there, and I sort of had the feeling that I was being watched. As I'm standing there, I begin to hear rustling from the side, which caught my eye. I saw that my friend was pointing for me to come over, he was just standing there waving, and he looked really scared. His eyes almost looked grey, and it was just plain weird. At this point, I was sort of annoyed and told him that I'm walking back to the car, in some sort of hope that he would quit his SHT and walk back with me. So I turned around, went back onto the path, and started walking towards the road, only to look back to see if my friend was following me. He wasn't, in fact, there was no one there. Right away, when I noticed my friend wasn't there, I heard someone walking up to me from the other side. I almost screamed as to how scared I was. I turned around, and it was my friend. It was weird because he came up to me, talking nonchalantly like nothing had happened. I gave him a friendly punch and asked him what he was calling me to see, and, I SHT you not, he said he never called me for anything. I really don't freaking know anymore. I am at a loss for words. There was no way that I was daydreaming twice. I wasn't on any sort of drug, and I wasn't intoxicated or even drinking. I'm just amazed by all of this and incredibly confused as to how I was encountered by the same face and body, wearing the same clothes and everything, yet my friend is claiming it wasn't him. I am originally from Brazil and have heard ghost stories before, but I have never encountered anything as creepy as this. My friend is not someone who would continuously pull a prank like that, it just isn't in his personality, and even if he did, it wouldn't explain how he was able to switch places so quickly in the matter of a minute. I don't know what else to say, I'm simply going to leave it at that.